San Diego Stadium, San Diego, California, and we're just about ready for the kickoff between these two ball clubs. And talking about the San Diego Chargers and the St. Louis Cardinals, both of them with three and five records, you can look for maybe a more explosive game tonight in terms of gambling, in terms of risk that they might take. As Howard pointed out, they are not, not mathematically eliminated from the divisional race, but they do know that as far as their hopes for a title, a playoff spot this year, they're pretty much gone. The Cardinals coming out onto the field. The San Diego Chargers have won the toss. They'll receive to your left. Jim Bakken, number 25, will kick off for the San Diego, for the St. Louis Cardinals. A beautiful night for football. Deep Jerry Levias. Obtained from Houston in an off-season trade. And you see Bryant Salter, who is one of the replacements that Seth Gelman is using this evening. He's shaking his lineup up considerably. He's starting new, two new setbacks. He'll start Jeff Queen. He'll start Mike Montgomery. And as we mentioned, he'll start Salter at the tight safety position. So we're about to get underway, and Jim Bakken, as we look at Jim Bakken, we can remind you that this is the number two most prolific scorer active in the National Football League today, and we don't have to tell you the other one. George Blanda, I'm sure he's watching the Oakland Raiders play this San Diego team next week. We're underway. Levias at the three-yard line. And Levias hit hard at the 15-yard line. George Hoey coming down to make the tackle. So San Diego will take over with good field position. We have told you that their setbacks will be Jeff Queen and Mike Montgomery. Queen, 47. Montgomery, 23. The quarterback, John Hadle, of course, number 21. At one split end is Billy Parks. At the flanker position, Gary Garrison. At the tight end, number 88, Pettis Norman. Garrison, now comes right. He's 27. The Parks is right, now 32. Garrison, out to the left. There's Montgomery. Montgomery over the 20. Montgomery to the 33-yard line. A break, breaking play for the Chargers early. A young man to watch all night. Mike Montgomery out of Kansas State. A throwback they feel here in San Diego to Keith Lincoln, who was the last great triple threat back they had in the early 60s. You'll probably see Mike on the option pass play tonight. He is an outstanding passer as well as runner. The ball at the 38 and a half yard line. Hadel brings the charges up, first and 10 from that point. Just underway here in San Diego. This is Wayne on an inside handoff. Wayne up to the right side, running into Mike McGill, number 56. Joe Schmeising, the defensive right end for the Cardinals, was also there, 82. Also in that defensive front four, the Cardinals. Bob Rowe, 75, is the right tackle. Fred Harris, the left tackle, he's 74. Number 78, starting at defensive left end for the Cardinals, is Ron Yankowski. The secondary, Miller Farr, Larry Wilson, Larry Willingham, and Roger Worley. Pick up of two, it'll be second down and eight. The ball at the 41-yard line. Hale with a quick toss over the middle, finds his tight end, Pettis Norman. Chargers moving into Cardinal territory. Ball at the 48-yard line. This telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Chargers Football Club. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the San Diego Chargers Football Club and the National Football League is prohibited. The Chargers moving from the Cardinals 47 yard line. Parks right, Garrison left. Flag goes down as Montgomery takes the handoff. It could be too much time. Frank had a nice long conversation today with Pettis Norman, who used to be the Dallas Cowboys, and, and John Hadel, actually, their roommates on the road. But you like to see everybody do well, but especially when you get to know somebody and appreciate a lot of things that uh, they stand for besides their athletic ability. It really does help. Pettis Norman came out here in the trade this offseason from Dallas. Fantastic competitor. He's been called a lot of foot, a lot of football player and not a very good receiver. And I was really interested in this today. He caught seven passes against Pittsburgh in one game. Last year he caught six the whole season with Dallas. All right, Don, put down remains the same. It'll be first and ten. Now the charges operate from their 48. The toss, it goes out to Jeff Queen. 
Green again with running room inside the 40 of the Cardinals. Bob Rowe moving over to make the stop, along with Fred Heron, 74, Rowe, 75. Jeff Green, who had a fine game last week against the New York Giants. Which is why he's starting tonight, Frank. The young man from Morgan State, which has turned out so many, is coming into his own as an outstanding running back. The ball resting on the 39-yard line of the St. Louis Cardinals. It'll be second down, a long two. Just underway in San Diego in the first quarter. Both wide receivers, Garrison and Parks, go out to the left. Worley is on Garrison. Larry Willingham is on Parks. Montgomery, he has the first down inside the 35-yard line. Excuse me, Frank, as I mentioned earlier, I was talking to Hale. I said, John, what do you really think you can do? And don't give me that same bet that everybody said, well, we're going to run first to set up our pass. He kind of laughed. He said, no, I'm going to pass first and set up my run. He said, no, really, we're going to try to run in the middle and around in. They play a wide 4-3. We'll try to pick that out a little bit later in the telecast, but they do split those defensive tackles pretty wide, so he's going to try to hit the middle or go around in with his run and hit short to leave him out first. First down on the 34 of the Cardinals. Hayler with the play fake. The screen goes to Parks. Parks slips. He bounces up, which he can do. He's down to the 25. Fumbles the football. The Cardinals have it. Larry Wilson, I believe, number eight. Well, the whistle had blown. There's still some action going on downfield. Miller Farr, I believe, picked up the football. Let's take a look again. You can see a screen. You see Lima coming out in front. He slipped right there, number 32. As Frank mentioned earlier in the telecast, he, Billy Parks, one of the leaders. Miller Farr, Miller Farr picked it up. Well, I messed that one up, folks, and we'll get better. Cardinals have got it. Okay. Hang in there, Dad. Here we go. Here we go. First and ten for the Cardinals from the 23. Gilliam is flanked to the left. Williams is right. Chargers steady. This is MacArthur Lane. A flag is down. Two flags now. MacArthur Lane. MacArthur Lane with a pickup of about seven. As we watch the officials, we'll tell you that Roy Shivers and MacArthur Lane are the setbacks. Opening for the Cardinals this evening. 17 is Jim Hart. He's the quarterback. A little under 50% on completions thus far this year. Four touchdown passes. John Gilliam, the speedy flanker, is number 44. As you see, the official indicated the procedure against St. Louis. We look at Sid Gilman. He came at the franchise here in San Diego. Ten years. Good way of putting it, right? All right, it's first down now in 15. The ball at the 17-yard line. Gilliam left, Williams right. Lane again. Hit by the middle of that defensive line of the Chargers, which we'll tell you is Tom Williams, number 87. 77 is Ron East. Kevin Hardy, number 80, is the right tackle. Steve DeLong, the right hand, number 82. We have some changes in the secondary. Brian Salter is opening at the tight safety. He's number 30. 44, Chris Fletcher is the free safety. On the left corner is Bob Howard. He's a good one. He's number 24. On the right side, Joe Bochan. Now from the 23-yard line, second down and 11. Hart flooding both backs out to the left. That'll draw linebackers and it's overthrown. Oh, Jim just got in a hurry that time. He had his man open, and he, as you mentioned, he did flood both backs to this one side. It puts a lot of pressure on the middle linebacker. The second back out of the backfield is the responsibility of that middle linebacker. He had not gotten over there. The ball was a little bit overthrown. He's in a pretty tough situation now with the third and twelfth. Third and twelfth call. I would imagine he's to try to work into the zone. The uh, Chargers are not against playing a zone every now and then. Out to the left comes Williams. He'll be covered there by Bochamp. To the right, John Gilliam. He's covered by Bob Howard. Setbacks. Edwards and Lane. Both good receivers. And Hart sends them both out. Firing deep for Smith. He can't hold on to the 40 yard line. Draw me. He did come over the middle to Jackie Smith, one of his most reliable receivers, and then the top receiver. I guess he's behind Bobby Joe Conrad and catches. He's always good for the long gator. He's got good speed and good size for a tight end. Fourth down for the St. Louis Cardinals. 
That will bring on Chuck Lotteret for their putter. Eight for San Diego, number 25 is Jerry Levias. And Chris Fletcher, 44. Our first putt of the evening, 10 minutes, 26 seconds remain in the first quarter. This is Lotteret. High kick. Handled by Fletcher at the 30. And down goes Fletcher at the 32-yard line. A 48-yard punt by Chuck Lotteret. And with timeout, the score is San Diego, nothing. St. Louis, nothing. John Hadel, who will have another attempt for the San Diego Chargers. They were moving well until a fumble. Turn things around. 10 minutes, 17 seconds remain in the first quarter. Hadel comes up to the line of scrimmage. First and 10, the ball at his own 31-yard line. Parks goes left, Garrison right. Montgomery with a big hole. Garrison with a fine block as Montgomery spins close to the 50-yard line. They make it look easy, Don. Sid Gilman said today, just let us get the football. We can move it on anybody. Our problem all year has been inability to defense, especially against the run. If we can somehow contain the Cardinals tonight, we'll move it all night. Let's have another look at it. The youngster from Kansas State, quick to find the hole, swift driving power, a big gainer. Frank? First and ten, the San Diego Chargers, they're on the 49-yard line, their own 49-yard line. Hadel on the quick down, gives it to Jeff Queen. Jeff Queen with running room. Jeff Queen, upended there by Roger Ooh. Worley, but not until he moves to the 40-yard line of the Cardinals. The pattern so far has been up the middle and around in. They're trying to take advantage of the isolation that the responsibility of the middle linebacker, Jamie Rivers, in covering the inside. They've got two good offensive guards, Walt Sweeney and Doug Wilkerson, uh, Wilkerson and they come in there and block on Rivers. The outside will have to get some pursuit from the cornerbacks, both Worley and Farr, come up and turn in the end run. First and ten for the San Diego Chargers. The ball just short of the Cardinals, 40-yard line. Montgomery, and Montgomery is up into there this time. Big number 78 moving across, Ron Yankowski. Loss of about a yard on the play. <laughs> they look at that Cardinal defensive unit, number 53, Jamie Rivers. My estimation, potentially one of the best around. 6'2", 235, Mike McGill is the right linebacker, number 56. Larry Stalling on the other side, 67. The linebacking core on a passing down for the Chargers. Parks goes out to the left to be covered by Worley. To the right goes Garrison. He'll be covered by Miller Farr. Queen out of the backfield and in out of the hand. Oh, so close is Larry Willingham. Larry Willingham, who has replaced Jerry Stovall in the Cardinals secondary. Stovall out with an injured knee. The whole game is changing, Frank. Notice how many passes are being thrown to the setbacks this year because of the zones and the variations of the zones, how the wide receivers are being contained much more than in the past. The reason, of course, being that in a zone you don't shoot linebackers, therefore you do not have to keep those setbacks in. That's why you see so many teams with their setbacks as their leading receivers. Now on third and 11, Hadel puts both his wide receivers, Garrison and Parks, out to the left. Worley on Garrison. Willingham covers Parks. Over the middle of Montgomery. Montgomery hit there by Miller Farr and Mike McGill. Farr, 20, 56 McGill. Close to a first down, but it will be short. On the ground level, Campbell is taking a look at it. You'll see Petty Storm on number 80 come across the line. He's clearing out a zone. Coming in on the inside is Montgomery. It's a clear out zone. You'll notice that formation. He had two wide receivers to the left. Montgomery came out of the backfield, set this side. It's almost impossible to zone that particular formation. Therefore, they did get man-to-man -man coverage. And on fourth and one, when you're three and five, you can do this. The Chargers are going to go for the first down. One setback is Jeff Queen. He gets the quick toss. He's going nowhere. Ron Yankowski. Too good a line to pass up, but when you're three and five, stuff like that happens to you. <laughs> Might be one of the reasons you can wind up three and five. I like that kind of call. It's, uh, Hadel had a great line today. I said, John, how's it going? He says, 10 years in the league and I'm three and five. <laughs> And with timeout, the score is San Diego nothing, the St. Louis Cardinals nothing. 
Ron Yankowski, who turned back that fourth down attempt. Sitting on the bench, he's the rookie from Kansas State. He's a good one. 6'5", 255 pounds, and he's quick. First and 10 for the Cardinals. Seven minutes, 25 seconds remain in the first quarter. The ball at the 38-yard line, the 38-yard line of the Cardinals. Gilliam right, Williams, <laughs> Williams right, Gilliam left. The big man, Ted Edwards, pick up of about four. Going back one play, Dandy, when San Diego elected to go for the yard and a half on fourth down, relatively deep into St. Louis territory. If you're going to go for it, why would you call a sweep, as John Hadle did, instead of going straight ahead? Well, I'll answer that, but let's look at this one. Before this is Bob Babich that just made this tackle. Only Arthur Lane coming in from his linebacker position. Straight handoff. I'll get to that in a minute, how that's an interesting point. Second down and five. The ball at the 43. Gilliam moves in from his left foot end position. MacArthur Lane moving behind Sid Edwards over the 45, short of the first down. There's a lot of things you have to take into consideration when you're in a in the huddle. It's fourth down and it is early in the ball game. Uh, number one, that's why everybody you know everybody looks for a, maybe a shot up the middle. Hadel does not have in the backfield what is known as a real power runner. Number one, I do think you run a lot of risk out there. You. Uh, more often than not, are going to see either a, an off-tackle shot or up the middle, or maybe that fake. I thought he might fake it and throw a pass. I don't know why he did that. Third down, a long two. The ball at the 46-yard line. Gilliam is to the left. Out to the right is Williams. The tight end, Jackie Smith, on the right side. MacArthur Lane gets the call, and he gets the first down inside of San Diego territory to the 46. Good block ahead of MacArthur Lane by Sid Edwards. This Saturday on ABC, folks, an exciting sports triple header. ABC's Wide World of Sports at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Remember, 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Then UCLA against USC from the Coliseum at 3 o'clock Eastern Time. Notre Dame against LSU from Baton Rouge at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. This Saturday, first and 10 for the Cardinals. They're on the Chargers, 46-yard line. Gilliam right. Williams left. This is Lane. Lane, inside the 40, inside the 35 is MacArthur Lane, hit there by Joe Bochamp, the right quarterback. What a great example of the power that guy has. He came outside with one hand, looked easily brushed off one linebacker, and he came over and ran into the other one. Let's take a look at him again. MacArthur Lane coming in from the inside. And that's, that's what's going on in your stiff arm. That was Salter that came up. Again, a great example of power. Unbelievable. First and 10, MacArthur Lane picking up the first down. The ball is resting on the 33-yard line of the San Diego Chargers. Five minutes and 19 seconds remain in the first quarter. Gilliam left, Williams right. Hart firing out to his tight end, Jackie Smith, who has it. Smith upended at the 27-yard line. Bob Howard is there, 24, Ryan Salter, number 30 for San Diego. Pickup of about seven. In his early years with the Cardinals, he, he's very aggressive, and the, his own players accuse him of being a linebacker finder. They say, you know, you'll catch that ball, and he goes out of his way, seems like to bump into folks. The total yardage so far tonight. I'm sure you witnessed San Diego has moved the ball well, and now the Cardinals are in great scoring position. Second down, a long three. The ball at the 27-yard line. Out to the left comes Dave Williams. Gilliam goes right. Tight end Smith on the left side. Jim Hart, all the way at quarterback. This is Sid Edwards. Sid Edwards cutting back for the first down into the 20-yard line is Sid Edwards. Edwards the Pete Barnes, number 59. There, along with Jim Hill. Just get us the ball, Sid Gilman said. We haven't been able to hold anyone. And right now, you see, apart from the one short pass to Jackie Smith, there's Hallway of the Cardinals. You see the Cardinals doing just what Sid Gilman feared. Rolling on the ground, San Diego presently unable to contain them. San Diego, which, is, which has itself loaned two opportunities thus far. The ball right at the 20-yard line again. First and 10 for the Cardinals as they continue to move. Hart looking out to the right for Gilliam. And he has it, and he is inbounds. Gilliam, the defender with Bob Howard, I believe he hit Gilliam and took him out of bounds, which is the completion. When you're in the grasp of a defender, you do not have to come in, down inbounds with both feet. 
First and ten Cardinals. Down to the six-yard line of the San Diego Chargers. Interesting that the play was made against Bob Howard in the prior four games. He's only had two catches against him. As Frank noted earlier in the game, Howard is a real good one. His development has been one of the pleasant surprises for San Diego over the past two years. First and goal for the St. Louis Cardinals, moving from the six-yard line. The play fake, the play fake to Sid Edwards, fired out of the flat to MacArthur Lane. Now it looked like he couldn't hold on to that one, hit him in the hands pretty good. That was a fake off tackle. I was just getting ready to mention before, the Chargers have had trouble on defense, which has been mentioned a couple of times. But my old buddy Ron East, number 77, and Tom Williams, number 87, are the defensive left end and left tackle. Ron East is weighing in at about 230, 235. He's got Tom Webb up to 250. You'd expect that the, if they're going to run, they're going to run to their right side, which would be over the defensive left side. All right, the stack backfield now for the St. Louis Cardinals on second down, six yards, and this is goal to go for MacArthur Lane. He's hit in there. Bob Babbage, number 60, along with the defensive front line of the Chargers. Bob Babbage may be the best defensive player the Chargers have. He came up three years ago from Miami of Ohio, a brilliant rookie, suffered knee damage in a preseason game, out for the year. Came on, in a sense, as a rookie last year. This year, finding himself, he is one of the really good linebackers around. It'll be third down, about four, and we might note that the leading touchdown receiver for the Cardinals, and he gets most of them in close, is Jackie Smith, number 81. The big tight end, he'll battle for the football. It is a passing situation for Jim Hart. Dory Shivers, the third man in that stacked backfield. Hart is going to roll. Irv Goody, 55. Back in the front of the end zone, number 83 for the St. Louis Cardinals, Jim McFarland, the other tight end, who had come in on the short yardage offense. Take a look. This is a power set. You'll see the three backs in the backfield. This is an option by the quarterback to run or pass. Rolling out to his right. Irv Goody, number 55, was in front of him. Got good pressure from the outside there. There's not enough folks to cover him. Jim Bakken now comes on for the conversion attempt. Jim McFarland, his second-year man, has just scored that touchdown. He is from Nebraska. A promising prospect. Bakken drilling it through the middle. An NFL Monday Night Football, the St. Louis Cardinals versus the San Diego Chargers, continues from San Diego Stadium with the score. The Cardinals 7, the Chargers nothing. Two minutes and 49 seconds remain in the first quarter from San Diego, California. An absolutely perfect night for football. Jim Bakken has just converted. After Jim McFarland took a touchdown pass from Jim Hart to put the Cardinals out in front. Number 25 is Jerry Levias. Number 30, Brian Salter. Deep for the Chargers. This will be Levias. Oh, and is he hit hard down to the 15th. Fred Hyatt really unloaded on Levias. In two kickoffs thus far, Jerry has gotten respectively to the 13 and 15 yard lines. Let's have another look at this. And Jerry, of course, is one of the most dangerous and exciting kick runners in the game. When you can break through and contain him like that, you're inevitably going to keep the other. Look at that tackle. Brilliant tackle by Hyde. Hard, crushing. Done in the old cowboy manner when Dandy was at the helm. First and 10 for the Chargers. They'll move from the 20 yard line. Out to Garrison. <laughs> Miller fires, they're not getting down, but he does get him out of bounds. A pickup of about four yards for Garrison. Jerry Levias, who has been benched by Billy Parks after a couple of fine years with the Houston Oilers. I'm not mistaken, he's only caught one pass this year, and that one was for a touchdown. Against Kansas City on the opening day when it, everything seemed so promising to these charges. Now from the 19 yard line. <laughs> Hadel having trouble with the setback. Both ship. Something is wrong, and the veteran Hadel says, I don't want to run this play when you guys are mixed up. Jeff Queen and Mike Montgomery both bouncing around back there. That happens a lot, Frank. 
You know, Dandy, Betty Davis is something of a legend. She's also some kind of woman. Get to know her when Betty Davis visits Dick Cabot for a special 90-minute interview on the Dick Cabot Show Wednesday night at 11.30, 10.30 Central Time here on ABC. And another quick reminder, too, about our college football doubleheader this Saturday. Wide World of Sports goes on at 2 o'clock Eastern Time. Get that. And after that one, USC against UCLA, and then the game from Baton Rouge, my friend. You're saying that on purpose, Howard, just to correct yourself a couple <laughs> weeks ago. Moving from the 19-yard line on second down. The ball goes out to Montgomery. He can pass. He's going deep to Garrison. He has it. Garrison inside of Cardinal territory. Larry Wilson was there, number eight. But Montgomery, who threw for a touchdown last week, is connected again. He's now three for four as a passer. That's exactly what we advised you of at the very top of the game. Watch this young man on the option pass plays. One of the best to come along in a long time at this. Take it, Dandy. Well, we'll just take a look. It's a quick pitch. You'll see the lineman going out in front of him. Great pursuit coming up there. That was not Wilson's man, necessarily. He's playing the strong set. It was out to the wide receiver. Free safety. Willingham actually has to come over and take care of that area. 31-yard pickup. First and 10 for the Chargers. Moving on the 48 of the Cardinals. Hadel with the screen pass. Jeff Queen. Queen running hard inside the 35 of the Cardinals. Beautifully executed screen pass. You saw Hadel at the beginning of that play fake a screen to his left. Very calmly or casually, more accurately, professionally, come back and throw to Queen. Hale is one of my favorite quarterbacks. I like the way he runs the team. You'll see it. Watch the fake there. Comes back, gets good pressure from the defensive line, flips it out to Queen. The play was really well set up. They really moved the football. Two prior times they moved it beautifully. The first time a fumble stopped them. The second time they had a yard and a half to go for a first down and didn't make it. First and ten charges on the 34 of the Cardinals. Dark strike, Garrison left. Montgomery with the football with a big hole. Montgomery dropped by Heron, but inside the 25-yard line of the Cardinals. Well, Sid Gelman has really shaken up his offensive unit, even though they were number one in the AFC. Mike Montgomery is a new starter. On the bench is Mike Garrett and Leon Burns. They have been the starters for the Chargers. <coughs> Jeff Queen is also there, and you understand why. They're both running hard. You know, we spent a lot of time trying to make this game sound pretty doggone complicated, but... That last time, I think he actually slipped. He was supposed to go outside. As he slipped, he came back on the inside because the Cardinals were in great pursuit. Second down, a long two. The ball at the 26. Montgomery gets the call. Close to the first down. He has it. <laughs> Moving behind Doug Wilkinson. His left guard and Terry Owens is Mike Montgomery for the first down. Schmeezing, 82 at the bottom of the pile, along with Bob Rowe. Clock moving. 20 seconds remain in the first quarter. Cardinals out in front, 7 to nothing. Hart hitting Jim McFarland on a three-yard touchdown pass. First and 10 Chargers. Moving on the Cardinals' 22-yard line. Garrison and Parks. Garrison 27, Parks 32. Come to the right as the gun goes off. And that is the end of the first quarter. With the score, the Cardinals 7, the Chargers nothing. I'm Bob Howard of the San Diego Chargers. That's the way I like to crack down in action. I like to rack up the drug problem too. At the start of the second quarter, we look at Jim Hart, who has put his Cardinals out in front of the San Diego Chargers here in San Diego, California. First and ten for the Chargers. They will move from the Cardinals' 22-yard line. Garrison right, Marks is left. Montgomery gets the call. He bobbled the football. But he also makes the recovery. That'll tell you the story of this football game thus far. San Diego, although trailing by seven points, have amassed 159 yards as Don Hadel has moved this team up and down the field. They risk 
a shot on fourth and one in the early going. They missed, and St. Louis converted that into a touchdown. Second down, now 11. Garrison goes out to the right, covered there by Miller Farr. Up to the left, Billy Parks, covered by Roger Worley. And Montgomery gets the call. He's thinking about passing. He up and throws Jeff Queen. Mike Montgomery. He's big, too. He's 6'2", 205 pounds. He shows a lot of promise. Kansas State. Larry Stallings, number 67, the most seasoned veteran linebacker that the Cardinals have. You see, he was checking in for the end sweep. Saw the possibility of a pass. Alertly came back, was at least in the area. All right, it's third down and 11 for the Chargers. Chuck Dykus comes in as one wide receiver. They got the tight end, Pettis Norman. Hadel screening to Montgomery. Mike McGill makes the stop, pick up of about five yards. And it will bring on Dennis Parti, the place kicking specialist for the Chargers on fourth down. His kicking has improved enormously, Frank, ever since he started taking lessons from George Glenn. And he has not missed this year from inside the 30-yard line. Dennis Partee. From Southern Methodist. Well, he is kicking from inside the 30. At about the 29 and a half. John Hadle doing the holding. Flag is down. Should it go against the Cardinals, I don't believe it would be enough yardage for a first down. We'll wait for the call. If they went for that fourth down while ago, they could go for this one too, Frank. It'll put it down there with, uh, I'd say no more than a yard. Let's see what they are going to do. See Pettis Norman up there, number 88. Another credit to Pettis. I mentioned earlier, as he came out, to prove to make this ball club. They were in two-a-day workouts for almost seven weeks and the thing was over he not only made a position on the team was voted by his teammates as one of the captains which is a real credit and it's one of the things that uh, I think means a lot to the individual player when his own teammates say hey you know man they decided to take it they decided to take that three always take the point I guess and with time out the score is the St. Louis Cardinals seven the San Diego Chargers three some people love cola so much, they can't stop drinking it. And for them, there's RC. With RC, you get a great cola taste that's easy on the syrup, easy on the gas. So it doesn't feel like too much. Right, OJ? RC, a great cola taste that's easy on the syrup, easy on the gas. For people like OJ Simpson, who can't stop drinking cola. Seven to three, the Cardinals over the San Diego Chargers, 13-36, remain in the half from San Diego, California. Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell and Don Meredith. You're looking at Mal Gray, awaiting the kickoff of Dennis Partee, and that's Larry Willingham. High kick, Willingham will field the ball to five. Willingham is completely turned upside down at the 25. Lee Thomas making the stop. That's smart to kick away, incidentally, from Mel Gray. Not that Willingham isn't a good returner, but let's take another look at this. Larry Willingham, the youngster from Auburn. And he is upended by Mr. Thomas like you wouldn't believe. Lee Thomas. I'll have more on Mel Gray in a moment because he's worth talking about. First and ten for the Cardinals. The ball on their own 20-yard line. Dave Williams comes out to the right. Out to the left is John Gilliam. Both backs out. Fired out to Gilliam. Complete. Over the 25-yard line at the 26. Bochan, number 40, is there. At some point in the game, you may see Gray in there as a wide receiver. He was used against the Giants earlier in the season and broke two against Willie Williams. As I said, brilliant sprint speed, 9.2 for the 100. Was in Santa Rosa High School in California. Went down to a track meet against a high school here in San Diego. Scouting him that day was Dan Devine, then the coach of the University of Missouri on the sidelines there, Larry Willingham of Auburn, the guy who got upended by Lee Thomas. But in any event, that was the day Devine signed Mel Gray to a letter of intent from Missouri. One, seven, 
Pick up of six yards left, six yards for Gillian on second down. Sid Edwards, running into trouble on the right side, he gets away and up to about the third yard block area. Sid Edwards with a good second effort. Bob Babich moves over from his middle linebacking position. And Sid Edwards appears to be shaken up. He was hit first by Steve Malone for his defensive end position. He came back and slowed him down. Almost for a loss. The Cardinals do have great running backs. They have had, as we mentioned in the early part of the show, difficulty breaking them this year, but Sid Edwards is certainly a guy who can carry his share of the load. Second effort by Sid Edwards gives the Cardinals a first down. Moving now from their own 30-yard line, Johnny Rowland has replaced Sid Edwards. MacArthur Lane behind the block of Rowland. Lane scrambling to about the 34-yard line. Rochamp is there. Salter comes up from his safety position, number 30, making his first start tonight for the Chargers. Defensively, you're looking at number 66, Rick Redman of the Chargers. And Edwards is shaken up. He broke a tackle, picked up four or five more yards and the first down, and he was really shaken up. He was hit by Bob Babich on the sidelines moments ago. Now from the 34-yard line on second down, Hart. Firing out to the carpet, rather Johnny Rowland, who could not find the handle. Bob Babbage, 60 middle linebacker, moving over. He's not too pleased with that one. That'll bring up third and sixth for Jim Hart. He never has had the career that was expected of him, Johnny Rowland. During the pro football war, he was a great one playing defensive back for the University of Missouri. Drafted by the Cardinals and by the Jets in the bidding war, the Cardinals won it. They thought he'd be a great running back. It hasn't yet proved out. On third and six, Gilliam goes left, covered there by Bochamp. To the right, Williams. He's covered there by Bob Howard. Tight end, Jackie Smith, breaking loose. Both backs out. Gilliam splitting the zone between Bochamp and Fletcher, incomplete. That one had some possibilities. Gilliam had worked himself in a pretty good position there. Bob Hallway in his rookie year as head coach has been coaching all of his life. Except for one year when he became a play-by-play -play announcer for the University of Michigan. Chuck Lauderette comes on to punch for the Cardinals. Levias and Chris Fletcher are deep. Levias 45, Fletcher 44. Lauderette averaging a little over 39 yards thus far. And he will run, now he'll pick. Beautiful maneuver by Lotterette. And the fair catch at the 18-yard line, a 47-yard putt by Lotterette, who was thinking about running that football. And with timeout, the score, the St. Louis Cardinals, 7, the San Diego Chargers, 3. 11 minutes and 22 seconds remain in the half from San Diego, California. Chargers trailing the Cardinals, 7-3. First and 10, San Diego. They'll be moving from their own 17-yard line. Now both wide receivers for the Chargers. Garrison and Parks go out to the right. Mike Garrett has moved into the backfield. That's Garrett. They moves around by quarterback John Hadle. Going for Parks, and he's knocked off his feet. Running into Larry Wilson deep downfield. Nice to see Mike Garrett in there, an old friend of Frank's, USC fellow alumnus, broke all of Frank's records, but Frank, did he have to do it all in one game? <laughs> he did. <laughs> Great little player, Heisman Award winner. Having a good year, as a matter of fact. The fact that he didn't start tonight doesn't detract from the fact that he's been averaging 4.6 yards per carry and has 22 pass receptions. Tough cookie. Scored the Chiefs' first touchdown, the Super Bowl victory over the Vikings. A sucker play when Mo Mormon executed the key tack a block. And has his recall. Second down now for the Chargers. Hadel. Going for Garrison, and it's almost picked off. Miller Farr defending against Gary Garrison. Miller had him covered that time, man. I tell you, it was a great move to the inside. Miller was right with him. The ball was possibly a little bit behind. Good coverage over there. Let's take a look at it again. Hadel come back, comes back, drops. Sees Pettis go to the middle. You can see Larry Wilson, number eight, in his strong safety position. 
I would say it was a type of a zone because Larry playing the strong safety ordinarily would go with Pettis Roman as you saw come across the early part of your screen. The different combinations of zones are so many, varied now that I can't keep up with them. All right, it's third down now. The passing down for John Hadel from the 17-yard line. Parks is left, Garrison to the right. Everybody out. This is Parks. Parks to the 37-yard line, tackled there by Mike McGill and Larry Stallings. Super move by Parks, and also good timing. Roger Worley, as we mentioned many times, is uh, an excellent defensive quarterback. He had Parks man for man. Parks came down, there's a Cardinal injured on that last play. They're trying to identify the Cardinal who is down. Miguel was in on the tackle. Let's take a look at that last play while we're getting some attention from Miguel. You'll see Hadel go back, reading the secondary, turning and firing. Once that ball comes, just at the time, Parks has come back, made his comeback move. Worley comes up from his position. It's very difficult. This guy's certainly in there, about equal in speed. So you see a guy come down the field like that, you've got to give him some room to run in. And that I was, think he, Yeah, it was Miguel that came in there. You saw Miguel coming in and sliding with Jamie Rivers, and Rivers is the man that's down at the 35. Gentlemen, while we await the resumption of action and the determination of the injury, apparently Mike is coming to himself now. On Thanksgiving Day, the nation's number one and two collegiate teams will clash head-on here on ABC. Be sure to join us, and I mean be sure to join us if you even need the urging for the Nebraska-Oklahoma game at 2.30 Eastern time. Thanksgiving night will feature the Bulldogs of Georgia against the engineers of Georgia Tech beginning at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Nebraska, Frank against Oklahoma. And of course, next week, SC UCLA. You bet I'll be watching that one. And Jamie Rivers now is getting to his feet. He was shaken up when Mike McGill came in on the tackle. I'll tell you again, the Parks have picked up the first down for the Chargers. Rivers is leaving the lineup. Jerry Levias is in on offense for the Chargers, and Jim Hargrove comes in at the middle linebacking position for the St. Louis Cardinals, replacing Jamie Rivers. Quite a loss, Jamie Rivers is really the strength of the Cardinals defense, particularly against the run. On first and ten, John Hadle brings his Chargers up. They have the ball on their own 37-yard line. Ten minutes, 42 seconds remain. Jeff Queen, and Jeff Queen is dumped. Ron Yankowski, who has made several key plays for the Cardinals tonight, was there. Kid's playing a good game tonight, Frank. Seems to have come a long way from when we saw him in our second Monday night game of the season against the Jets, when they were suckering him from time to time. Indeed, he was uh, quite a prospect for them. Ralph Kruger had taken over that starting spot, but Yankowski is back in there this evening. Frank, as you know, on a quick pitch like that, a lot of teams don't even block the defensive end because most defensive ends can't recover quick enough to catch him. He is a quick one. Chargers now moving on second down from the 32-yard line. Hadel hiding the ball to draw fake. Fires to Jeff Queen. Queen over the 45 to the 47. Ron Yankowski on the stop. First down, I believe, or very close to that first down marker. Well, we've seen a lot of offense by the Chargers tonight. We haven't seen that many points, but they have been moving the ball very well. We're going to get the measurement. Queen, cutting back, moved very close to the first down. First down. By the way, Frank, I think we should report, as the first down is pointed out, that Sid Edwards' injury was grass in the eye, nothing serious, and Jamie Rivers, nothing serious, fortunately, just a bloody nose. That updates us on the men who've gone out. Always glad to hear that. The ball at the 46-yard line of the Chargers. Nine minutes, 30 seconds in the half, the clock moving. The Chargers, trailing the Cardinals, 7-3. to three. Hale is going deep for Garrison. And Miller Farr picks it off. Miller Farr with the interception, moving back to the 27-yard line. 
Good move by Miller Farr. The ball's a little bit underthrown. I think Taylor was actually trying to go to this side on a stop and go. Worley did not take the fake. Worley played a good job over here at defensive quarterback. John Neely turned and threw and just underthrew that ball. And Miller Farr also had his man covered. It was a great pickoff. Outstanding defensive effort by the Cardinals. Both cornerbacks. Miller Farr there, you see, has made that interception. First and ten for the Cardinals. Ball at their own 27-yard line. Mel Gray is in one wide receiver. Here's MacArthur Lane. He runs into a lot of charges. Savage is there at 60. Howard coming up, number 24. And ABC Sports exclusive coverage of NFL Monday Night Football pauses five seconds for station identification. There you saw the troubles of MacArthur Lane. Getting back to the line of scrimmage, which is at the 27. Gilliam comes right on second and 10. Up to the left is Mel Gray. The tight end Jackie Smith is to the left. Hart looking for the screen man. MacArthur Lane, he has it. McMillan with a block out in front. It'll be short of the first down. The ball at the 39-yard line. Pete Barnes, number 59, moving over for the stop. Once again, Babbage, number 60, was in there too, Giff. He's been averaging 13 and a half tackles per game. Miller Farr, the gentleman who made the interception as you view him on the sideline. Those well, half tackles will get you, you know it. <laughs> Those 13 were good as that half one that you get in trouble with. If we didn't say the half, golfer Phil Rogers would have been outraged. Yeah, he's been figuring those up for us every week. <laughs> Third down, a long three. Hart brings the Cardinals up. Ball to 34. Up to the left is Mel Gray. Covered there by Bochamp. Firing over the middle from MacArthur Lane, or rather Sid Edwards, and Sid Edwards can't hold on to the football. That will bring on the fourth down, and will bring Chuck Lotteret out for the St. Louis Cardinals. And dropping deep for the Chargers, 25 is Jerry Levias and Bryant Salter, or rather Chris Fletcher, number 44, the two deep men for the Chargers. As we await the punt, Frank, a reminder of those halftime highlights. When did you see that Bobby Douglas pass to Dick Butkus? <laughs> and I always knew Butkus would be a receiver. <laughs> Caught a lot of backs, I'll tell you that. Jeff Lotteret kicking well this evening. Fletcher with the fair catch indication. 37-yard punt, and with timeout to score, St. Louis 7, San Diego 3. There's Jamie Rivers. He's back in the lineup. As Howard mentioned a moment ago, Jamie Rivers, on a bloody nose from his own teammate, Mike McGill, tackling Parks. And again, we'll tell you, the Cardinals are out in front of the San Diego Chargers, 7-3. Seven, seven minutes, 17 seconds remain in the second quarter. Mike Garrett and Jamie Rivers on the stop. Pick up of about two or three yards for Mike Garrett. The, Card the Cardinals ahead seven to three. We're going to look at Rivers making this tackle now. Number 53 moving in behind the blockers and dropping the runner. But San Diego has been utterly dominant in yardage gains. 192 yards to 87 to St. Louis. From the 32-yard line, Parks is set left, covered there by Worley, out to the right, Garrison, as Hadel looks for the screen, this is Jeff Green, he'll go nowhere. Larry Stallings on the stop. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a slight loss. So Hadel now will be faced with the third down. As we look at the Cardinals bench, Betty Hyatt, number 88, John Gilliam with that great speed. Look at John Gilliam. He broke into pro football, returning a kickoff for the New Orleans Saints, the first time the Saints ever had the football, the first time he ever touched the football. Great speed. Third and seven. Coming out to the right. Is Park. Out to the left is Garrison. Right, we're going to see a reverse. This is Garrison. 
sneezing. Read the reverse beautifully. Back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down. We got to take another shot of that one because I Hadel almost made a block. I want to get that one. I'm sure we can run it back a little while I'm hitting to the truck. <laughs> you mean our technical yes. equipment area? Oh, I know they can handle it. Did you ever throw a block comes. done? Watch this. I want you to watch Hadel's block, number 21. Whoops. <laughs> now, that's the way to hit him, John. That one didn't go exactly as you planned. On fourth down, Dennis Partee, Will Pantelari Willingham, and Roger Worley. Oh, and he gets off a of beauty. Fair catch indicated there by Worley. Back at about the 22-yard line of the Cardinals. Well, gentlemen, next Monday we've got the Packers who almost, but not quite, tied and even might have defeated the Vikings, losing yesterday 3 to nothing against the Falcons who lost to Tuffy against the Giants. But the Falcons have been a deceptive team all year long, and because San Francisco lost, they're only a game and a half behind the 49ers, a game behind the Rams. Those two meet next Sunday. So we've got a good one coming up next Monday night. And a lot of action right here. The Cardinals leading the Chargers 7-3. They have the football moving from their own 22-yard line, first and 10. Sid Edwards. Sid Edwards. Up into there. Steve DeLong, 82. The principal on the stop. Pick up of about three. Make it to 25. And after next Monday night, it's Miami, Frank. The Bears against the Dolphins, which should be a honey as we get an opportunity to view Butkus in his new role as wide receiver. It's going to be nice to him. We have to meet him down there. He's a little awesome. Pick up a three. Second down and seven. Hart going deep. Looking over the middle. This is Lane. He holds on to this one. Close to the first down. Dropped there on the 32-yard line by Bob Babich. Babich now. Seven tackles to assist. All right, we're going to take a look at this one. Talk about our game next week between my, uh, Atlanta and yeah, Atlanta and Green Bay. You Notice know, that uh, son of the preacher man, old Francis Tarkin, had a good day in Atlanta yesterday. His hometown against his old coach, and just made up his own play and sneaked over there on fourth down and won that one. I thought you were going to say his old pal. <laughs> his old pal, the Dutchman. Well, he's his old coach. I'll tell you, they would have second-guessed Francis all over the lot if he didn't make it. He deserves a lot of credit. A gambling guy and a great player. First and ten Cardinals. The ball on their own 32-yard line. Three minutes, 52 seconds remaining in the half. They're out in front of the Chargers, seven to three. Play fake. Going out to Gilliam to be plucked. Jim Hart, an up-and-down career. He opened for the Cardinals this year, was replaced by Pete Beathard. Now he's back making his third consecutive start for the Cardinals. You know, Don, we were talking earlier. What did you say? It takes about 10 years before you learn how to play quarterback? Uh, it must, because I quit after the ninth one. I didn't <laughs> ever get it down. He has had some real good games. He's had some that haven't been so good. And that's what happens when you have uh, you play that position right there, wear number 17. <laughs> Second down, they come with the draw to MacArthur Lane, who breaks tackles up to the 45-yard line. Babbage again. I'll correct myself. That's Edwards. Sit, Edwards. Well, Frank, I'm going to take up for you, because 36 and 39 look a whole lot alike coming out of that backfield. But let's look at it again. And that's Bob Babbage, the man who's going to make this tackle. Boy, he is a good one. That certainly is. That's a full-fledged tackle right there. That's not a half tackle. I'm going to give him credit for all of that one. First and ten for the Cardinals. They're at the 45-yard line. Their own 45. Mel Gray right. Gillian out to the left. Again, the big draw. The whole linebacker's by Hart. Jackie Smith. There's a hole in the middle there. Fletcher makes the stop, but Smith moves inside the 35 of the Chargers. The clock moving. 2.52 remaining in the first half. Jackie Smith, 6'4", 235 pounds, and as Don indicated a while ago, he is a competitor. I think you call him the linebacker finder. No, I didn't. I don't get that straight right now. I heard some of his other guys, some of his real close friends, saying that uh, early in his career he was a linebacker finder. I call him Mr. Smith. Well, I like it. He runs over most of them. He does, for a fact. It's first and ten. The ball at the 34 of the San Diego Chargers. The Cardinals in possession. Go, Cardinals out the front, seven to three. Let's go, 
Hoff goes out to MacArthur Lane. Bob Reynolds with a good block in front. Lane, the ball carrier. Lane down to about the 30 yard line. MacArthur Lane gave him a forearm shiver there, didn't he, when he was coming up to make that tackle? Defensive terminology for these folks who may not know what a forearm shiver is, is uh, you just pop it to them. MacArthur Lane. As you see, 40 yards, eight carries. Pick up that time. We'll call it three. Second down and seven. Lane moving out of bounds. Kills the clock. The Cardinals do have their three timeouts remaining. Now Gray moves out to the right. He's covered there by Bob Howard. On the left side, moving in tight. This is Gillian. This is MacArthur Lane. And he breaks tackles, moving Lane in the ball carrier, tackled by Keith Barnes. Got him moving and got that two minute warning coming up here. And Cawthor's getting his pants pulled up. Getting ready to go. Let's take a look at it again. Quick trapping up the middle. And then he's hitting it. Well, he's going in front of it. So with timeout, the score is the St. Louis Cardinals 7, the Chargers 3. One of the world's great golfers, Phil Rogers, and you can see he doesn't idolize Arnold Palmer. He has his own hero. <laughs> Phil, good to have you here. I love it. I the love only it. man who blew the British Open when victory appeared to be within his grasp, Phil Rogers. The reason why he loves you, Howard, to keep missing things like that. The Cardinals now moving. Two minutes left in the half. They lead the Chargers 7-3. to three. They have the ball first and 10 at the 19-yard line of the Chargers. Hart going all the way. Again, the play fake. Fired out to MacArthur Lane, out of bounds. That's a 14, 13 yard line out of MacArthur Lane. Barnes. Barnes over there, along with Bochamp, but MacArthur Lane stops the clock. That play using four seconds. Cardinals now going with their big setbacks. A combination of Sheriff with 39 and MacArthur Lane at 36. Dave Williams has gone out of the game. Mel Gray is in, along with the other wide receivers, John Gilliam. Gilliam goes out to the left, gray to the right. Second down and five. Lane, Lane the ball inside the 10 is MacArthur Lane. Tripped up by Ben. Frank, you watch these Cardinal backs with all that power. You wonder why the longest gain from scrimmage this year has been 22 yards by MacArthur Lane in our second Monday night game against the Jets. Last year, MacArthur was busting them for 50 yards and more. Howard, I've wondered so many years about this Cardinal team. You look at them man for man, they have great talent. You see a Larry Wilson who has never been in a playoff in 12 years, a Jackie Smith, and they're looking now as the yard markers are brought out. It'll be third and inches. And will come the short yardage offense for the Cardinals. Shivers comes in. Once before, they have shown the stack formation. And that they'll show again. Shivers, the deep man, and the car goes back. Third down, inches, the ball at the nine yard line. Edwards, Edwards, hunting for what appears to be the first down. Good Edwards. First down to St. Louis. Edwards going over the top. A minute and eight seconds remain. Cardinals with their three timeouts remaining. They cannot make a first down from this point. First and goal from the eight and a half yard line. Now Gray comes right. Gilliam has moved in tight on the left side. Play face. Looking for Jackie Smith. Overthrown. Bryant Salter for 30, covering. As mentioned before, Jim Hart called up. Uh, when they say a flood pattern, he's sending as many receivers as he can into one area, and then rolling toward that area gives him an opportunity to really isolate some of the players in the secondary. You'll see him take makes the fake to his fullback, MacArthur Lane. We'll watch Jackie Smith, number 81, and he looks to be open, and he is open. The ball is a little bit... A little bit overthrown, but when you get out on the outside like that, you turn the corner, you've got the opportunity to put pressure on that defensive secondary. 48 seconds remain in the first half. 
Dave Williams. Oh, coming to the lineup. Up the middle goes MacArthur Lane. Going to start using a little timeout pretty soon. There we have one now. Jim Hart indicating he wants to go over and have a little chit chat with his head coach, Bob Hallway. There is the amount of seconds that remain in the first half. Extremely frustrating for any offensive team to march from one end of the field down to the other and you get down to the 10 yard line. And again, we mentioned before, you eliminate some of the plays that you can call for lack of field to maneuver in. But this is really frustrating. It's also a great incentive for the defensive team to hold them. They say, you know, if we can hold these guys to a field goal, some way it does take a, a little edge off of it. And Hart's over there talking to the coaches. He says, okay, I've got to get this thing in here. What am I going to do? Hey, Don, he had uh, Jackie Smith so wide open. It uh, wouldn't be, it'd be a terrible temptation to come back to him. Uh, he's working against a new man back there, Brian Salter. I would I would say so, Frank, and if you possibly can, if you can run a, the same pattern from another formation, it would also help. Now, a lot of times you see a formation that a defense will key against, and they'll see this formation come up again, and they're a little bit better prepared for it. Now, if they could run that same pattern to get him isolated and, and yet from a different formation, I think it'd be a very good call. Which is exactly what the Cowboys used to love to do and still do. That's what a lot of teams try to do. The, I guess that's one of the keys to the multiple for offensive formations. From the six-yard line, the Cardinals moving on third down. 36 seconds remain. Williams is out to the right. Jackie Smith is out to the right. Smith is tripped up out to Gilliam. And he drilled that one out of bounds. Oh, that was something. It was a good throw. I'd like to maybe take another look at that one to see what they're doing because that one's drilled in there in pretty good shape. That's John Gilliam. The... He did catch it, didn't he? Joe Bochamp doing a fine job of covering. He did catch it out of bounds. Let's take a look at it again. The straight drop back is a square out pattern. Zone blocking up in front. And uh, let's don't get into that. Yeah, let's don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not from that angle. <laughs> from the 13 yard line, Bakken, Larry Wilson, holding. About half a nine iron for Bakken. Good. Like block work. You know, the National Football League dominated pro football for 40 years until the American Football League came along to issue its challenge in 1960. The stories of the new league and all of the leagues in pro football history are told in bright and colorful displays in the leagues and champions room of the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. The hall has almost doubled in size in the last year, and the leagues and champions room is just one of the many new attractions. The Pro Football Hall of Fame is open daily throughout the year. Meredith is not yet in it. <laughs> you always put things so delicately out. There he is on the sidelines, MacArthur Lane. He's having a good night. What a year he had last year. This year has been a little different story for MacArthur Lane, although he is the Cardinals' leading rusher. All right, Jim Bakken is going to kick off to Jerry Levias and Chris Fletcher. They're not deep. They're anticipating a short kick, and Bakken switches up on them. This will be Levias from the eight. <laughs> down goes Levias. The 35 was down there. Larry Stengent. Sid Edwards on the sidelines. MacArthur Lane's running mate. They've really contained Levias. As a kicker in it tonight on those kickoffs, he got to the 13 once, the 15 once, the 20 this time. Hadel going quickly. They've called the play on the sidelines to conserve time. Fires to Pettis Norman. He can't hold on to it. Ooh. That's your pal there, Don. That's my old partner. I'll guarantee you. Pettis Norman. He remains what you said he is, an inspirational football player. He may now take lessons from Dick Butkus. <laughs> Incidentally, watching Butkus make that catch on the ball thrown by Bobby Douglas to beat the Redskins yesterday, and you'll see that play at halftime, of course, reminded me, Frank, of that game in the early 60s, the fake field goal called by the Giants against the St. Louis Cardinals. The good yell may pass to defensive end Robustelli for the touchdown, remember? That's exactly what it reminded me of. <laughs> that me. Yeah. One second down, 14 seconds remain at halftime. The big guard. And he steps out of bounds as the clock ticks down to nine seconds remaining in the half. <laughs> Jim Hart on the sidelines. He has his Cardinals out in front, 10 to 3. He scored in the first quarter on a three-yard touchdown pass. A rollout, Hart to McFarland. 
It's third down now, along seven. John Hale with nine seconds remaining on the clock. It's always interesting to watch these calls because it tells you a little bit about the personality of the quarterback, too. Prevent defense now for the Cardinals. Naturally, they move into six man secondary. Hale fires out to the flat. That's Parks. Clock ticking down. Shows no time remaining. And there's the gun. And that is the end of the first half with the score. The Cardinals 10, the Chargers 3. San Diego Stadium, San Diego, California, halftime score. St. Louis Cardinals 10, San Diego Chargers 3, and a tough ball game. A game that's turned out interestingly, despite the fact that both teams entered the game with respective identical records of three up and five down. Here's the way the scoring went. St. Louis in the first quarter, a three-yard pass. Hard to Jim McFarland, a second tight in and in for the occasion. And the Cardinals went ahead 7 to nothing In the second quarter, Partee, a 25-yard field goal for the Chargers, 7-3 to St. Louis. And then shortly before the end of the half, a 13-yard field goal by consistent Jim Bakken. And so the Cardinals lead it 10-3 to at halftime. The statistics, San Diego at a time was ahead of St. Louis in offensive plays, but St. Louis came back with full control to take over. And yet, in total yards gained, San Diego continues to lead, as you will know, 209 yards to 159 yards. And in yards passing, San Diego is a conclusive leader. In yards rushing, St. Louis slightly ahead. And, of course, we've been talking about our halftime NFL highlights provided by NFL Films and selected by our producers. Let's have a look at yesterday. Candlestick Park, San Francisco, the Saints against the 49ers. We pick up with first quarter action, four minutes remaining. The 49ers leading three to nothing. John Brody with the play action. And then John Brody with the pass to Vic Washington. Touchdown, the 49ers leading as expected, 10 to nothing. The New Orleans was a grim team, fought back. Now they're trailing 13 to 10. This is third quarter action. And watch Ed Hoggett as he throws to Dave Parks, the one-time 49er. And New Orleans goes ahead, 16 to 13, the conversion attempt blocked. But once again, the 49ers, John Brody to Vic Washington, and 49ers lead 20 to 19 over the Saints. Still, the Saints wouldn't give up. The underdog striking back, 47 seconds remaining in the game. Ed Hoggett stubbing for the alien Archie Manning, throwing and hitting Virgil Robinson. Touchdown, the Saints bring the big upset, 26-20 over the 49ers. Soldiers Field, Chicago. The Chicago Bears warming up for that battle against the Washington Redskins, a battle that began as a game of field goals. We show you now a montage of same as Kurt Knight of the Redskins kicks five in all. Back came Mac Percival of the Bears with three in all, eight by both teams tying an NFL record. Seemed like a touchdown would never be scored in this game. But then, in the fourth quarter, three minutes and 41 seconds elapsed. Watch number 22, Cyril Pinder. The handoff from Bobby Douglas to Pinder. Pinder bursts up the middle. Power and speed at play. Nobody's going to touch him. 40 yards, touchdown. The Bears tie it, 15 and 15. And then this. The attempt for the point after. Bobby Douglas, the would-be holder. The bad snap. Bobby dropping back, back. Looking for someone, anyone to throw to. And finding in the person of middle linebacker Dick Butkus an extraordinary play. The Bears win it 16-15 over the Washington Redskins. What a play. Atlanta Stadium. 
A dance of happiness before the game, the Falcons against the Giants. First quarter, five minutes remaining. Atlanta leading 7 0. Tarkenton handing off to Tucker Fredrickson, number 24. Off damaged knees, two knee operations. Still a great player. Moving downfield, showing the greatness now. Running it all 37 yards. The Giants getting ready to strike back. Some plays later, Tarkenton dropping back, looking for his receiver. Loves to throw to his tight end in clutch situations, Bob Tucker. This time is no exception. Tucker grabs it. The Giants tie it at 7-7. Seven and seven. Third quarter action. Atlanta now leading 10-7. Barry in at quarterback for the Falcons. Looking for his tight end, Jim Mitchell, finding him all alone. Touchdown. Atlanta scores to a 10-point lead, 17-7. The Giants are coming back. Third quarter action, 223 remaining. The handoff to Bobby Duhon. A four-yard joint for a touchdown. It's 17 to 14. Atlanta still leading. The Giants coming back. Tarkenton exercising ball control in the fourth quarter. 34 seconds remaining on the Atlanta two-yard line. Tarkenton with the quarterback sneak. Big gamble. It works. Giants win 21 to 17. The Orange Bowl, Miami, Florida, the Dolphins to go against the Pittsburgh Steelers. First quarter action, Miami leading 3 to nothing. Pittsburgh ball, Bradshaw passing 30 yards to David Smith. And it's a touchdown in Pittsburgh. The underdog takes a 7-3 lead. We're still in the first quarter. 4.45 remaining, 7-3 still to score. Bradshaw with the golden arm throwing again. Complete to Ronnie Shanklin. Touchdown, the Steelers moving to a 14 to 3 edge down there they didn't want to believe it now it's the second quarter 217 in Bradshaw passing 16 yards again to Dave Smith another Pittsburgh touchdown 21 to 3 the Miami cause appearing hopeless a big upset apparently underway we're in the second quarter nine minutes remaining Bob Greasy out of a night in the hospital throwing 41 yards to Howard Twilley. And now the Dolphins have begun their comeback. This is four plays later. Watch Bob Greasy, supposedly subpar. Throwing 12 yards, Paul Warfield. Touchdown, 21 to 10, Pittsburgh. Still in the second quarter. 148 left. Bob Greasy back again. What a young quarterback Greasy is. He finds Paul Warfield. The very great receiver from Ohio State by way of Cleveland. And this is an 86-yard touchdown play. Pittsburgh 21, Miami 17. This is fourth quarter action. The first play of the quarter. Greasy again. Who else? Paul Warfield. A 60-yard touchdown play. Miami fails it out over Pittsburgh 24 to 21. Chase, 2,947, Jets against the Colts. The Jets trying to surprise Bob Davis in on the quarterback sneak. Second play of the second quarter. Jets 7, Baltimore nothing. Dreams of an upset such as a week ago against Kansas City, but not to be. That's Don Nottingham going in in the third quarter with 8.08 remaining. Baltimore, led by John Unitas, ties it up at 7-7. Seven and seven. Still in the third quarter. The handoff from Unitas to Tom Maddie. The gifted ball player who never looks good enough but always does what he has to do makes the touchdown. Baltimore leads it 14 to 7. Still the third quarter. Next to the last play. Bob Davis back. Passing to Emerson Boozer, number 32. Boozer down the left sideline. Boozer picking up vast yardage. Boozer finally down. And the Jets are ready to make their move. That play gained 36 yards. This is four plays later. Davis back in the pocket. Looks for and finds Richie Castor. And the youngster from Jackson State corrals the pigskin. It's 14 to 13. Extra point attempt. Howfield kicking. The kick blocked by Ted the Mad Stark Hendricks. And now Howfield looking for somebody to throw it to, but the ball, of course, is dead. And so it remains at 14 to 13. We're still in the fourth floor. Bob Davis trying to rescue this contest. Looking for his favorite target again. 
Richard Casca, bring in catch, just inbound. The Jets, again in field goal position. Score 14-13, Baltimore, the field goal attempt from the 22. Bobby Howfield kicking. Again, the kick is blocked, this time by Jerry Logan. Baltimore saves the game, 14-13. to A wild day yesterday, and we're having quite a football game here this evening in San Diego. You see the Cardinals out in front of the Chargers, 10-3. An NFL Monday Night Football, the St. Louis Cardinals versus the San Diego Chargers, is being brought to you by Goodyear, the only makers of long-wearing polyglass tires, and by Mercury, where better ideas make better cars. It's as simple as that. Mercury makes better cars. At the sign of the cat. And we'll be ready for the second half kickoff between the Cardinals and the Chargers after this word from our local station. your screen is Mel Gray, number 85, Norm Thompson, the bottom of your screen, awaiting the kickoff. Dennis Partee to get the second half underway. Cardinals, out in front of the Chargers, 10 to 3. Frank Gifford, along with Howard Cosell and Don Meredith. This will be handled by Mel Gray near the sidelines. No, he must have bound through the end zone. Touchback. Cardinals got out in front of the first quarter. And Jim Hart will take a this look at This is the way they got in front, Frank. It's a rollout by Jim Hart, number 17. An option runner pass. He's going down into the end zone. Number 83, Jim McFarlane is the one that makes this catch. You saw that Hart rolled out out of the five, six yard line. McFarlane caught at the end of the end zone. All right, we're underway. Jim Hart opening again at quarterback. He's set for back to Sid Edwards in MacArthur Lane. Gilliam is one flanker. Dave Williams, the other flanker. Gilliam is at the top of your screen. Williams to the right. First and 10 from the 20. This is MacArthur Lane. Moving behind the block of Reynolds. Up over the 25 to about the 26. Williams there to make the stop defensively for the Cardinals. A fine offensive line of the Cardinals that has had their problems this year. Nevertheless, they have good talent. Ernie McMillan, 73. The right tackle, Clyde Williams, 63. The right guard, Wayne Mulligan, is a center. He's number 50. Irv Goody, who played center last week, has now moved back to left guard, 55. Bob Reynolds is the left tackle. Second down and three. The ball at the 26 for the Cardinals. Out to the left is Williams. Covered there by Bochamp. Williams is to the right, covered by Howard. Edwards gets the call. He'll be short for the first down. And defensively for the Chargers, a young team, Tom Williams, who made that tackle, number 87, left tackle, Ron East, brother Williams on left hand. East is the left tackle, 77. Hardy, the right tackle, number 80. Steve DeLong, the right hand, 82. Pete Barnes, one linebacker. He'll always play the weak side linebacker. That is the man who is not over the tight end. He's number 59. Bob Babich is in the middle, 60. Rick Redmond. 66, the left side linebacker, third and very short yardage. His heart brings up his stack, short yardage offense. Shivers the deep man. Edwards gets the lunging call. He'll be close, but did he make it? Big pile up at the 30 yard line. All right, we will await the call. Ron East, Kevin Hardy, the bottom of that pile. First and ten for St. Louis. In that San Diego Chargers secondary, one change this evening from their previous defensive set of the past few weeks is number 30, Bryant Salter. He's at the strong safety. His job tonight to cover Jackie Smith, a difficult one. Bob Howard, the left cornerback, 24. The right cornerback, Joe Bochamp, 40. Chris Fletcher, the free safety, 44. First and ten Cardinals from the 31, their own 31. This is MacArthur Lane. Lane picks up four yards to the 34. Second down now and six. Twelve minutes, 35 seconds. We made in the third quarter. Martha Lane having one of his better nights. 
came into this game with 316 yards rushing. Gilliam is left. Williams is right. Gilliam covered by Bochamp. Hard in trouble. Gillong the miss. What an arm he's got. He has Gilliam all alone. Oh, what a collision, too. Gilliam holds on to the football, and he really took a shot. He's inside the 25 of the Chargers, and John, he threw that football like a slingshot. He did, and he got hit pretty well when he threw that one. That was a mixed-up play. Let's take a look at it again. You see on split screen, he's trying to hit Gilliam out there to the, on his left. Well covered, comes back and throws out on this side. That was covered also. He begins to scramble. You'll see Gilliam turn up to go, which is a very smart move by receiver. Hart throws, and just as he throws, he's really wiped out. Gilliam coming back, and look at this collision here in the secondary by the Charger. Wow. Brian Salter really hitting Gilliam. And with timeout, our score are the St. Louis Cardinals 10, the San Diego Chargers 3. On the sidelines is Joe Bochamp, who let Gilliam get behind him in the zone defense. Along with Chris Fletcher, he came back, made the tackle. He was shaken up, but he appears to be all right. The ball resting now on the Chargers' 24-yard line. Pick up a 42 yards on that pass play. Williams is right. Gilliam is left. Jackie Smith jumps <laughs> offside, and he has upset Lane. Well, he'll move around. No whistle is blown that we heard until now, and he... That was a good move by Lane, though. Frank, a lot of times you'll see something like that, and the whistle will blow, which does stop it. But the whistle didn't blow, as you pointed out, McLean, uh, Arthur McLean, McLean. Arthur Lane kept running, got back to that line of scrimmage. Had they tackled him back on about the 30 there, I'm sure that would have been another decision for San Diego Charger. Jackie, uh, you can see, expressed his... Chagrin. Yes, yeah, chagrin. Disgust. He didn't like it. Didn't like his own move. He wasn't pleased with himself. Cost the Cardinals five yards, and they were in good position. Now first and 15. Moving from the 29-yard line, the Chargers 29-yard line. Jim Hart puts Gilliam tight to the left side. Out to the right comes Dave Williams. Jackie Smith the tight end on the right side. Smith covered by Salter. Howard is covering Williams. And in the back side, this is Went, uh, Gilliam over the middle. Gets back to about the 20. Fletcher is there. This Fletcher, who had moved to the right cornerback after Joe Bochamp was shaken up. Fletcher went to the cornerback, and Jim Hill came in as the free safety. The cap of almost 10. It'll be second down and six. Be careful of that Jim Hill, Frank. Used to be a disc jockey, now he's a sports announcer. <coughs> Harry Wilson, nobody dear veteran. Nobody can chew gum like Larry Wilson. He can't chew at the front because they're not there. On second and six. Going deep for Gilliam, and he can't hold on to it. Back there deep was Chris Fletcher. And Hart, when Fletcher was moved to the corner, went right to work on him. He's not familiar with that spot. And he's picked on a tough man in Gilliam. He sure has. We saw Gilliam scintillate in his uh, second game of the year. Let's take another look at it. And watch Kenyon go right past Fletcher, each man wearing number 44. Sandy, the screen, well, you'll screen. see Hart come back. As he'll probably say to Gilliam, so all I can do is get it there. He used his speed to pull away from Fletcher because Fletcher was in pretty good position. He just weaved to the outside. And, man, that is where you try to get it. Right out in front, laying it out there. Too bad about that, John. Third down and six. The ball from the 29-yard line. Bochamp is back into the ball game. This goes out. The attempt to MacArthur Lane, incomplete. That one was slightly deflected. He had McLaughlin, MacArthur Lane open out there. That would have at least been good enough for his first down. So those, that's the second one, I believe, tonight that's been deflected by the Charger front line. So on fourth down, Jim Bakken will come in for the Cardinals. <laughs> Jim Bakken, the second most <laughs> scorer, as we mentioned earlier, active today, behind only... George Blonda, he'll kick this from the 27-yard line. Block! Block! A pick off! Oh, that was going to have been trouble there. Big play. Big play. Jim Colbert. Jim Colbert caught that ball in midair. 
I think the Chargers have been watching the Baltimore Colts. First and ten Chargers. Score remains. Cardinals ten, Chargers three. Ray White blocked that kick for San Diego. First and ten Chargers. They'll move them to their own 27-yard line. Halo got all of his backs out. Fires to Montgomery. Whirly misses the tackle. And a big scramble up the 38-yard line. First down, Chargers. Give a lot of credit to that San Diego offensive line. Hadel had good time to throw. He split out Montgomery to this side. You'll see Montgomery sitting over here. This is a double flanker, double wing. What do you want to call it? He's isolated. His pattern actually is not what you call one of your real fancy patterns, but he had Worley coming up. Worley missed the tackle. But Hadel had good time to throw this time. First and ten, the Chargers now moving from their own 39-yard line. Both wide receivers go to the right, Garrison and Billy Parks. Hato on the quick count. Fires out to Montgomery. That one could be trouble. Rush and Washington. Go. Rush, Washington out in front. Another far. Takes Montgomery out of bounds. He's in front of the Cardinals' 30-yard line. Right, Montgomery hurt his ankle a little bit. That was a great move by Miller Farr to keep that one from going all the way. As they say in the trade, the old intangible superstar, Mo Minum, now seems to be wearing the San Diego Charger uniform. And as Frank mentioned, Big Rush Washington, 23 now coming out. Big Rush Washington leading with the blocking there. A young man drafted by the Chargers, played defense for, played defense for a couple of years and now on offense and doing a good job. From the 32-yard line, the Chargers moving. Queen. Jeff Queen, breaking tackles, moving inside the 25. He's just slipping and sliding right on through. Pick up of about nine yards for Jeff Queen. They're alive now. On the sidelines, Mike Montgomery trying to shake off the effects of a blow as he had moved San Diego Chargers into good field position. Garrison now goes to the right. Out to the left comes the Leading receiver for the Chargers, Billy Parks. Second down, a yard to go. The ball resting on the 24-yard line. This is Garrett cutting back. Inside the 20 to the 18 is Mike Garrett. First down. Here's Jimmy Rivers, the middle linebacker. Injured slightly earlier in the game. Going to make the tackle. You'll see the flow go away. Watch this move by Garrett, number 20. He stops, cuts back. Against the flow, here comes Rivers in, number 53, to make it. They did pick up a first down. The ball now at the 18-yard line. The Chargers trailing. They trail by seven, 10 to three. Out to the right goes Garrison. Parks to the left. Yes, Queen. Queen to the 15-yard line. A pick up of three. Queen to the 15. Pull it. I'm working on it. <laughs> and we can tell you, as we mentioned earlier, that as the passing situation presents itself to John Hadle, he likes to throw on second and long yardage. Billy Parks, the leading receiver in the American Football Conference, who lost that lead yesterday to Dave Smith of the Pittsburgh Steelers, who caught six against Miami. And Billy Parks has regained that lead. Second down, the ball on the 15. Seven yards to go. Montgomery, hurdles one tackler, moves to the 12. Getting close, John, and we're getting close to this Saturday with ABC's Wide World of Sports coming on at 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, UCLA against USC from the LA Coliseum at 3.30 Eastern Standard Time, Notre Dame against LSU from Baton Rouge, Louisiana at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, this Saturday. Seven minutes and 22 seconds remain in the third quarter. A critical down for the San Diego Chargers. Both wide receivers, Garrison and Billy Parks move out to the right. Hato with a single back remaining. Slips and falls, recovers. He picks up the first down. They're very close to it. I believe that was a called quarterback draw. You saw him go back to that double wing formation that he used earlier. He had Montgomery come out of the backfield, set to his left, 
He had two wide receivers to the wide side of the field. One remaining back in Jeff Queen was set in a wide pitch position. That's going to be a little short, I believe, Frank. Or is it? Yeah. How right. do you call it, then? You got to go for it, man. You're down here. Pettis, tell him. Pettis is out there talking to him. Let's watch this. You'll see Jamie Rivers is the middle linebacker. Halo goes back two steps, but slips right there. Had he not slipped, he could have gotten in there a little bit quicker. Russ Washington is in there blocking on that one. All right, fourth down. The ball about the nine and a half yard line. You saw how much Hadel needs. And he has it. John Hadel lunging forward. Two crucial situations. Again, power running from the quarterback position. John Hadle picking up the first down. The ball now at the eight yard line of the St. Louis Cardinals. It'll be first and goal. The Cardinals get tough down here. They're getting, they play a little bit tighter. They've got well, good coordination in their defense. Let's see what John wants to do. I bet he throws. On first down. I lost. Montgomery. Montgomery running hard inside the five. Hit there by Joe Schmeezy. 82. Ground level camera, you'll see him. A straight handoff, off tackle. That's Montgomery. Good block, made his cut. Larry Wilson, number eight, is right there getting a shot of it. And Larry Wilson, and that's Young Yankowski. Ron Yankowski in there close, closing. From the four-yard line on second down, both wide receivers to the right, Garrison and Parks. Running hard is Jeff Queen. He's and in there the end zone. Jeff Queen, tackled by Mike McGill, but he got into the end zone. And this game is one point away from being tied up. All right, let's watch it again. A straight handoff, Jeff Queen, number 47. Fighting his way across. Let's take a look at it again. Straight handoff in there. Jeff Queen, number 47, picking up his block. Terry Owens and Doug Wilkerson were in there. That ties it up. Dennis Partey ties it up. When with timeout, the score, the St. Louis Cardinals 10, the San Diego Chargers 10. Dennis Partey who has just tied up this football game, gets set to kick off to Mel Gray, number 85, and Norm Thompson, number 43. Five minutes and 32 seconds remain to be played in the third quarter. All tied up at 10 apiece. A wobbly kick. Mel Gray will field it at the goal line. And he is in. Look at him there. Man, is he got some open. Yeah, he goes. Mel Gray run out of bounds finally by Jim Hill. And did he fly up that sideline? Did he ever? And momentum has just switched sides. Momentum is now with the Cardinals. Look at Mel Gray. This one did hit in front of him. You get a feeling right there. He's taken off with that one. Good blocking by the Cardinals special teams. Made a cut to the outside. As they pointed out earlier, he does have great speed. Right up that sideline. This thing could have easily gone all the way. That's Jimmy Hill coming over with 39 to keep him from going all the way. 59-yard return by Mel Gray. First and 10 for the Cardinals. Moving from the 41-yard line of the Chargers. Jim Hart. Firing for Lane. He says, I have it. MacArthur Lane hit by Jimmy Hill, and it is complete. Down to the 23-yard line. As we continue to see more and more of these setbacks coming out of the backfield. That ball got there at about a tie with the Lane and Jimmy Hill. And the Lane just reached in there and took it away from him. On about the 22 right now. Defensively, the Chargers line up their own 20 yard line. The Cardinals first and 10. The ball at the 23 of the Chargers. To the right is Gray. Going back is Hart. Firing again over the middle, and again intended for MacArthur Lane. Brother Sid Edwards this time coming out of the backfield, and one of the great pros of all time, Larry Wilson. Six times in the last 
six years, this man has been all pro. Guarantee he's not thinking about anything other than what he can do to help his defensive team play a little bit better. On the contrary, he's rooting for a touchdown. Well, he's talking to somebody. That'll make his job easier. What in the world? Tough little cookie. Through all the years, maybe the best one-on-one -on -one tackler of any defensive secondary in football. It's second down now for his teammates. They're moving on the 23-yard line of the Chargers. Mel Gray right, Gilliam left. This is Lane. Lane back to the 20. And Hart now will be faced with the third, and we'll call it a long eight. The receivers will be Jackie Smith. Not a bad football game, Frank. Two teams, as we pointed out, at three and five. Nowhere really to go in the standings, but two teams with good ability in moving the football, and what we've got is a good, tight, all-even ball game in St. Louis again in threatening position. Gilliam goes left. He'll be covered there by Bochamp. Out to the right comes Mel Gray, covered by Howard. The tight end, Jackie Smith. Good field position on the right side. Hart's going to pass. Intercepted. Bryant Salter drops the football, picks up the football. <laughs> Double dribble. Well, I don't know what that was. Take another look at that one in a little while because it was uh, right into his hand. Well, you've got to give the Chargers a lot of credit. Twice they've stifled St. Louis drives in this half. Once by blocking the kick. Let's take another look at it and let Dandy take over. Well, I know he had a two-man pattern. He faked that draw. Came back, he had Jackie Smith crossing across, had Gilliam coming in there. The ball seemed to be way overthrown, right into Salter, number 30. He dropped the ball right there, as we can see the committee. Well, we'll take a look at it again in a minute, maybe. Chargers running back to their 48-yard line. Hadel throwing out the flat to Queen. Queen up into the 49-yard line. Larry Stalling, 67, moving out from his left linebacking position. That's the first Cardinal turnover of this football game. Three minutes. 29 seconds remain to be played in the third quarter, and the clock is moving. Interesting to see the way some draft choices work out, Frank. An unsung draft choice, number five by the Chargers, Brian Saller from Pitt. Mike Montgomery, who's played so well tonight, all the talk is, was about Rockington and Riggins in the draft room. Nobody mentioned Montgomery. On second and nine, both wide receivers come out to the left, Parks and Garrison. Hadel sending both backs out. Fired over the middle. That is Norman. Norman to the 44-yard line of the St. Louis Cardinals. An ABC Sports exclusive coverage of NFL Monday Night Football pauses five seconds for station identification. Hadel, now 15 for 20. He has a third and short yardage. He's been known to play action and go for the bomb. He puts both his wide receivers, Garrison, Park, out to the right. Montgomery now shifts to the right along with Queen near the setback. Queen goes nowhere. Nailed at the line of scrimmage for a loss, as a matter of fact. Larry Stallings was in there, man. They buckled up. Cardinal defense came in. MacArthur's ready to go now. That will bring on fourth down. It will also bring on Dennis Partee, who is going to have to kick this football from about... Well, they decide not to go for the field goal. Partee, who does double duty as a punter and a kicker, who will punt. He'll be kicking to Roger Worley, 22, and Larry Willingham. High kick. Almost kicked out of the stadium. That <laughs> ball will be dead there. What a what super move. Luck. What luck. Well, that's not luck. That man knows how to do that stuff. He's down there with him. There's old Chris Fletcher, who was down there waiting on him. Partee kicked that thing as high as old men got down there. Dennis Partee, give him credit for that. He kicked the ball. Well, I don't think I've ever seen one kick that high. He's big, 6'1", 240, and he really got into it. 45-yard punt. And the Cardinals will take over on their own one-yard line. And with timeout, the score, the Cardinals 10, the Chargers 10. A minute and 27 seconds remain to be played in the third quarter from San Diego, California on a beautiful night 
And we've got a dilly going. The Cardinals 10, the Chargers 10. And Dennis Partee has just kicked a high punt, which was down by Chris Fletcher, on the one-yard line of the St. Louis Cardinals. They're 99 yards away from untying this game. There's Jim Hart going all the way for the Cardinals tonight. He'll sneak it out to try and get some operation room. And he does move out to about the three-yard line. Tell you quickly, the St. Louis Cardinals got on the scoreboard first. They picked up a seven-yard touchdown. Jim Hart to McFarland, the tight end. That was in the first period. Partee then hit on a 25-yard field goal for the San Diego Chargers. That made it 7-3 St. Louis. Then Bakken hit on a 13-yard field goal. That made it 10-3. It ended that way. And then Jeff Queen scored on a four-yard run to tie it up at 10 apiece. And that's where it is. Second down and eight. The ball from the three. Hart will try it again. And he moves over the five. Bob Hallway, a career coach. Great University of Michigan athlete in his first year with the Cardinals. Given credit for molding the defensive unit of the Minnesota Vikings, where he joined Bud Grant when Grant came there in 1967. It's third down, now in five. Hart has room to operate if he wishes. He puts Gray to the left. He's covered out there by Bochamp. Out to the right is Gilliam to be covered by Howard. He has his big tight end to the wide side of the field on the left. And he's going to go for a big one. Back there with Gilliam is Howard. Howard complaining he was stripped. Incomplete. Let's take a look at it. He's going to go back. As Frank mentioned, he did get a little operating room. He just wind up and thrown it, and he does have a great throw. Looks to me like it might be a little offensive interference there with old Gilliam. But he was going for that ball. Fourth down, and Chuck Lauderette will come on to kick from his own end zone, meaning the Chargers, able to handle the football, will be in good field position. They have Jerry Leviathan, Chris Fletcher deep. Lauderette will have to hurry this one. He does not have all the room that he would like to have, although he is back with 15 yards. And Lauderette hits a booming punt. The fair catch, just inside the 50 by Jerry Leviathan. And there is the gun. And that is the end of the third quarter with the score, the Cardinals 10, the Chargers 10. We'll return after this word from our local station. The beginning of the final period, the final quarter here in San Diego is all tied up. The Cardinals 10, the Chargers 10. The Chargers have the football just inside their own territory, the ball at the 49. Both wide receivers come right, Parks and Garrison. Both backs out. This is Montgomery. Montgomery to the 43. Up into there by Jamie Rivers. This game is all tied up and is pretty close statistically. Chargers had multiple opportunities in the first half, but they just never gained the momentum until the second half. And they have been hitting. It'll be second down now, two. Defensively, that's secondary for the Cardinals. Miller Farr on the left side. Larry Wilson and Larry Willingham are the safeties. Roger Worley, the right cornerback. And John Hadel, moving from the 43-yard line of the Cardinals. Hands off again to Montgomery. Montgomery breaks into the clear. Montgomery to the 33. Hit there by Larry Willingham. He's a good one. Well, looks that way tonight. An off-tackle play on a quick count. You'll see Montgomery come in, break a tackle at the line of scrimmage. He's not only fast, but he's got some good moves. First and ten. The Cardinals moving. Whether the Cardinals defending against the Cardinals. Gilliam looking on. Ball up the 33-yard line of the Cardinals. Both wide receivers called the flip offensive set. They're out to the left, fired over the middle of the pass. Why many he but cannot hold on to it? Well, Don, you didn't give him enough practice down there in Dallas. Tell you what, we used to have, uh, we didn't go to Pettis that much, to be really honest. Uh, I don't know if we're talking about it today. Pettis says, you know, man, you, these guys out here are really throwing to me. Pettis is not 
known as a, an outstanding receiver or was not known as an outstanding receiver in Dallas. And I man, it has something to do. If you don't throw to him, they can't catch it. So we probably didn't use him enough. That one bounced in and out there that time. It's second down and ten. Garrison goes out to the left, covered there by Worley. Parks is in the slot. He'll be covered there by Willingham and Wilson. The draw call to Queen. Another Montgomery on the draw play. This will bring up third down for Hable. Yes, another one of those off-mentioned third down situations, and a very big one for the Chargers. Now they'd like this touchdown. Let the Cardinals play catch up. Third and twelve. The clock moving. Thirteen minutes. Ten seconds remain to be played in the game. Ball resting on the 34-yard line of the Cardinals. Parks goes out to the left, will be covered there by Worley. Out to the right comes Garrison, he's covered by Miller Farr. Tight end Norman on the right side. Hadel dropping back and out of trouble, he gets away from it. Firing deep for Parks, can't hold on to it. Back there defending Roger Worley. Great he job is of a defending. Beauty. He yes, is sir. a beauty, as Frank mentioned at the top of the show. He's an all-pro cornerback. And that may be the greatest strength of the Cardinals as we take another look at this. They have fine secondary. You see Worley using his hands, legitimate under the circumstances, and then up to knock down the ball. All right, now this is another thing to keep in mind. Hadle had a lot of time to throw this time. He was almost trapped. The defenders went down. You'll see him come back. Great recovery by Worley. From the 42-yard line, Dennis Partee will try to untie the football game. And he'll be wide left. Dennis Partee misses. And NFL Monday Night Football, the St. Louis Cardinals versus the San Diego Chargers, continues from San Diego Stadium with the score, the Cardinals 10, the Chargers 10. Here's a good one, Roger Worley, whom we've been speaking of, 6'1", 195 pounds in his third year, a number one draft pick out of Missouri three years ago. Cardinals. Take over, first and ten, after the touchback, the missed field goal by Partee, the ball on their own 20. His lane gets away from Williams down the sidelines, moving for about eight yards out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Kevin Hardy moving over to make the stop. He got away from Tom Williams, as Frank noted that time, but Williams has played a good game tonight. He's been all over the field. Number two draft choice a year ago, and funny kind of kid, sort of a hippie. When Sid Gilman called him, asked him to come in to sign his contract, he said, I got a great hotel room for you. Williams said, I sleep on the beach. And the ball at the 29 on second down. A yard and a half to go for the Cardinals first down. Any hard? Sid Edwards. Upended right about the line of scrimmage. You know, a lot of players wear contact lenses. You see Jamie Rivers adjusting his. He says, I got it, man. There you are, Jamie Rivers. As his teammates pick up the first down. The crowd of 46,000, the partisan crowd here at San Diego, they would have liked to have seen a measure on that. They weren't sure of that. Ball resting on the 30-yard line of the Cardinals. This is Jim Hart, who has Mel Gray out to the left, Gilliam out to the right. Now he moves his step backs with the automatic. Fired out to MacArthur Lane. Babbage misses as Lane moves over the 35 to the 36. It appeared to be an audible you saw of a couple of the guys moved after he had made his first call. I think he anticipated the blitz. It didn't come. MacArthur Lane, on most pattern, patterns that are designed against the blitz, is to go out into the flat to get man-to-man -man coverage in that secondary. Couldn't find his man open downfield. Just threw out the flat where MacArthur Lane was. Pickup of six yards for Lane. The ball at the 36-yard line of the Cardinals. Bell Gray again left. Gilliam to the right on second down. Again, the automatic call. Lane again, following Sid Edwards. He'll be short of the first down on about the 39-yard line. Steve DeLong, number 82, in the tackle, along with Kevin Hardy, 80. 
They make up half of the front four. That includes Ron East, 77, and Tom Williams, 87. Linebackers remain intact. Rick Redmond, 66. Bob Babbage, 60 in the middle. Pete Barnes, 59 on the right side. The San Diego defense seems to be putting it together a little better tonight, don't you think, Frank? That they are, and one of the reasons is that middle linebacker, number 60, Bob Babbage. The stack, short yardage offense. On third and a long one, Roy Shivers is the deep man. This is MacArthur Lane with the football, and did the second ever make it? He'll be very close. And this time they will measure, I believe. While we're awaiting the measurement, there is, I think, another reason why the San Diego defense is going to get better in the years to come and may even be showing its improvement tonight, Frank. You remember in the 50s when San Francisco came in to play a game against your Giants. You were on the team, Chuck Connolly, then the quarterback. You were the heavy favorites, but San Francisco won that day, and their defensive coach was a fellow named Bill Bengston. The first thing, we're going to look at Babbage now. He's been all over the field tonight. We've talked about him from time to time. Babbage and Jimmy Hill, I'd say that MacArthur Lane just kind of powered his way over him. This on first down, Hart wants to go out to the flat, he wants to go to Lane, this incomplete. Just to finish that story, Frank, you remember San Francisco upset you guys. Vince Lombardi was your offensive coach. He never forgot the 49er defense against his offense that day. The first thing he did when he took over at Green Bay was hire Bengston to lead the defense. Bengston has been hired this year by Gilman to lead the defense. And a fine job he's done. The team has come along. Again, I'll tell you, it's very young. Has a lot of promise, and particularly on the corners, Bob Howard has been a good one all year long. Bochamp, another one. We now have a second down and 10. The ball at the 40-yard line of the Cardinals. Nine minutes, 48 seconds remain to be played. Hart for Jackie Smith. He has it. Well, Jackie Smith in inside the 35. Jim Hill made the stop. But as Don said, he slipped it right between two defenders, and he can hold on to it in a crowd. Good throw by Hart, too. He, uh, his linebackers had good depth. They dropped back about 10 or 15 yards. The arch of that football had to be just right to drop over the linebackers' heads and into the Jackie Smith's arms before he got to the secondary. Big first down for St. Louis. The ball at the 34-yard line of the, of the San Diego Chargers has... Mel Gray comes left, Gillian goes right. Fire to Jackie Smith, he can't hold on to it. Oh, goodness and laugh. Bryant Salter picks it out of the air. His second interception. Well, we'll have to see that one again. I'm telling you, looked like Jackie had it. Balancing it up, it did pop up in the air. Jackie Smith, you'll see at the bottom of your screen, number 81, comes out on the slant out. He's drilled in there, tried to one-hand it, and Salter just went over him and intercepted. Great interception. That cat's doing all right. Yes. And with timeout, the score is the Cardinals, 10 of the Chargers, 10. This is Bryant Salter, a fifth-round draft pick from the University of Pittsburgh. He's just made his second interception. He started for the first time tonight, replacing Jim Talbert, who had been the regular safety, and what a night he's had. The Chargers, first and 10, they're moving from the 32-yard line, their own 32. It's all tied up. This is Montgomery. Montgomery over the 35 to the 38-yard line. Amy Rivers and Larry Wilson make the stop. Gain of six. Eight minutes, 27 seconds remain to be played. The ball resting now in the 37 and one half yard line of the Chargers. Parks goes out to the left, Garrison to the right. Montgomery with a big hole. Boy, they opened it up there, and I sure like the way this young man moves. He is quick. 
We've really seen two good offensive shows tonight. These things are amazing how close they are. San Diego just went ahead in first downs that time, but the passing and the running for both teams almost identical. So is the score. That might have something to do with it. Haven't had that much scoring. Yet we both expected, or everybody expected, this game to be a high scoring battle. <laughs> the Cardinals defensive unit brace Dodgers on their own 49-yard line. Montgomery gets the call again, moves into Cardinal territory at 49. And the clock running, 7.22 to go. And after the night, Frank, only 240 more minutes of Monday night football this year. Green Bay at Atlanta next week. Then the Bears go down to the Orange Bowl to face the Dolphins. Then Kansas City goes to Candlestick Park to go against the 49ers. And then back to the Los Angeles Coliseum comes George Allen and the Washington Redskins against the LA Rams. Good sketch. Why didn't you just say four more games instead of 240 <laughs> minutes? <laughs> Second down, call it a long eight. The ball resting just in the Cardinal territory. Cato faking the draw. Fires out to Montgomery with good blocking. Russ Washington out in front. Russ Washington with a great block. Moves Montgomery inside the Cardinal 40. First down. Oh, Mo is back on San Diego's team now, it looks like. He faked the draw, flipped it out to Montgomery. As Brink pointed out, it was a good semi-screen set out. He had that offensive line out in front of him. He's using Montgomery on the last four plays. Oftentimes, you'll see him now try to give him a rest, and he might look for Jeff Queen to do a little something back there. On first and ten, the ball at the 35-and-a-half yard line. Hadel took both wide receivers. Parks, Garrison to the left. Jeff Queen making up yardage to the 34-yard line. They get the 33-yard line of the Cardinals. Jamie Rivers on the tackle. You know, figured in the last play, as he's figured many tonight, though we haven't singled him out, number 78, Walt Sweeney. One of the really great players at his position of his time, an all-pro offensive guard. He executes at his position, Frank, the way Forrest Gregg used to in his prime at Green Bay. He is a good one, as are many of those offensive blockers for John Hadle, the number one offensive team in the American Football Conference, the San Diego Chargers. From the 34-yard line, Again, Hadle with good faking. Fires over the... This is Parks. Man, that's mixing them up. Great fake in the backfield. I think it held that linebackers where they didn't get as deep as they have been. Enabled Parks to get in there behind him. He's some kind of receiver. You see that fake? It was, he came back right over the linebackers. Larry Wilson go to the outside. Park stumbled a little bit after he caught that when he could have possibly scored. He is some ball player. At Worcester, Ohio last year, between preseason games, Billy Parks decided football wasn't his bag. Stayed out last year, came back this year. Loves the game now, and what a job he's doing. First and 10, the ball at the 10. Parks with four catches, 60 yards, has regained the pass-catching lead in the American Football Conference and all of the NFL, as a matter of fact. Montgomery again. Breaking a tackle, well, moving to the five. Larry Willingham on the stop. And the clock, a very important factor. 416, 415, and counting down. The Chargers showing a lot of fire here in the second half. We're in the final quarter. Four minutes and two seconds remain. It's tied up. Ten apiece. Cardinals moved out in front in the first quarter. Scoring on a touchdown pass, Hart to McFarland. They now are in danger of going behind. Both wide receivers move right on second down. Montgomery gets the call. Montgomery to Maybe a yard for Montgomery. Cardinals stopped that one. 82, Joe Schmeising was there, along with Ralph Kruger, number 70. All right, you'd have to suspect that Hadel must put the ball in the air. He is going to get a play from Sid Gilman, whom we're watching on the sidelines, from Chuck Dykus. Three minutes, 20 seconds remain in the final quarter. It's a short yardage set. Now, Hadel says, I don't want Dykus. I want timeout. I want to talk to you, Sid. And with timeout, score the Cardinals 10, the Chargers 10.
Remember, gentlemen, this matter is strictly confidential. No word of what passes among us today must be Panasonic cassette tape recorders give you lots of ways to remember. Some with hidden microphones, even some with built-in radios. And these Panasonics set the right recording level automatically, so you can expect a beautiful playback. Remember, gentlemen, even when you don't expect it. Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Getting onto the freeway at rush hour is a challenge if your car has this problem. Step on the gas, and it stumbles, falters. That's called hesitation. In real cars, it may be caused by poor fuel distribution. If it is, you may get help from Esso. Three new efficiency gasolines with HTA. Try a couple of tankfuls. For a lot of cars, that's all you may need to overcome hesitation and help you meet the freeway challenge. It's third and four. Don Hadel was sent in a play. He didn't like it. He called timeout, went over and conferred with his head coach, Sid Gilman. Tied up. The Cardinals 10. The Chargers 10. Hadel on a rollout option. Jeff Green touchdown. Oh, boy. I want to tell you that Hadel is a darn good quarterback, and he's a man. When he refused Dykus' play that Gilman sent in and went over, he established for everybody in this ballpark his leadership qualities. Don't you agree, Frank? I do, and I think you saw the conversation between he and Gilman. Gilman respects his man also. He's been with him 10 years. Again, here's the same type rollout Cardinals have used. Again, it puts pressure on the outside. No one covered Queen on that side. Someone missed an assignment. Had they not missed it, he'd still been in good position to either run or throw that thing in. You see a lot of rollouts down close to the goal line. Adel holding for Dennis Partee. It's good. And the cannon that always goes off when the Chargers score goes off here in San Diego. You see it again in slow motion. Good call, Don, when you say he's Yeah, I think it's runner. a great call. And I agree with Howard. I think it's not only a step... He, he's trying to establish himself as the leader for that team, and they do believe in Hadel. He's proved himself too many times. You'll see it's wide open. Number 88 is Pettis Norman on the back side of your screen there. He also was open. All right, as we await the kickoff with the Chargers leading 17 to 10, one last word about Johnny Hadel, who just led the Chargers to that touchdown. When we were here a year ago, our fourth Monday night game a year ago, the Chargers were playing the Packers, and the fans were booing John Hadel out of this stadium. You know something about that, Dandy. They're not booing him now. Frank? All right, Dennis Partee will kick off the final quarter. We have three minutes and 16 seconds remaining to be played in the game. The Chargers have gone out in front. Mel Gray, Norm Thompson are deep. Mel Gray. Back to the 29-yard line for Mel Gray. Don't forget, fans, this Saturday on ABC, an exciting sports triple header, ABC's Wide World of Sports at 2, get that, 2 Eastern time. UCLA versus USC from the LA Coliseum at 3.30 Eastern time, and then Notre Dame against LSU from Baton Rouge at 8 Eastern time. That's this Saturday. Jim Hart. We'll try and direct the Cardinals to a come from behind effort. Fires out to Sid Edwards. He can't hold on to the football. Almost a duplicate of what we saw a while ago by the same man, Salter. Again, that popped up. Jim's not happy with that one. Hart can do it. He's had a good night tonight. Solar has been an opportunist all night tonight. Again, referring to interesting things about the pro football draft, Frank, when you mentioned Solar, number five draft choice from Pitt. Remember the Green Bay Packers selected a defensive back this year, Charlie Hall, in the top three from Pitt. He's had quite a night as Hart brings up his Cardinals. Two minutes, 45 seconds remain to be played in this football game. He trails. Gilliam left, Gray right. Fires out to Gilliam, and this is almost picked off there by Bochamp. They're both fighting for possession, and should it be simultaneous possession, it would go to the offensive unit. Bochamp was trying to prove his point, I think, to Gilliam, although it didn't make much difference to Gilliam. Again, just a quick, quick out pattern. You'll see the ball gets there about the same time. Bochamp does make a move in to try to pick it off. 
as, point, as Frank pointed out, if it's a tie, it does go to offense. On third and five, Jackie Smith. First down, the ball at the 48-yard line. Bob Babbage moving over to make the stop. Time, two minutes and six seconds. It'll be stopped with the two-minute warning. The Cardinals lining up. They will not be able to get this one off. And with timeout, the score, the Chargers 17, the Cardinals 10. Crazy legs, Gifford. <laughs> of course, they remember the third down catch in the key game against the Steelers in 63. One hand, and so they call him Crazy Legs. Howard, how was that? Yeah, how would that have anything to do with Crazy Legs with one-handed catch? That's the way they think. That's the way you think. <laughs> <laughs> Good football game. Gifford. The Cardinals, first and ten. They're on their own 48-and-a-half-yard line. They have two minutes. We come from seven points down. They trail 17-10. to 10. Jim Hart, who's had a good night. He's had passes dropped this evening. He puts Mal Gray to the left. Covered there by both ends. Up to the right is Gilliam. He drops back with both backs coming out. Right eight to Gilliam, and it'll be picked off. Howard, Bob Howard. Bob Howard picks off that Jim Hart attempt to John Gilliam. Let's see what happens here. Gilliam coming down, square out and go. Howard didn't go for that square out at all. Whoop, 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 whoop. I don't know what that was. <laughs> Tough luck with that. We'll show it to you again, maybe. Anyway, Howard played that one very well, playing deep. The ball was thrown a little bit over Gilliam's head. Third interception tonight for the Chargers. A minute and 40 seconds remain to be played. The clock is moving. John Hadle, junior veteran, will be very careful with that football. He has a good lead. He knows it. He'll give it to his most sure-handed back, and we'll find out which one it is right now. This Montgomery. He drops the football. The Cardinals have recovered, I believe. He may have. That's on. Good play off of your words, Frank, with that sure hand. Let's see what happens on this handoff. Looks like, I believe Montgomery just restored a little bit. Good move in there by Kruger. Not giving much time to think about it. He just fumbled that thing. The Cardinals now are right back in it. Jamie Rivers was the one that popped Montgomery. They called their play on the sideline. They won't huddle. They want to conserve time. A minute 14, the clock moving. Good place to work. He's got man to man on that linebacker. Another fumble, but the Cardinals pick that one up. Sid Edwards, coming out of the backfield. Hart stops the clock with a timeout. He'll go over and talk to Bob Hallway. A minute and two seconds remain to be played. Wow. A lot of action. You Hart. know, considering uh, the records of these two teams, St. Louis, of course, trails Washington. As we see that last play, they trail Washington and Dallas in their division. They have little chance to get back into it. Ball did go to St. Edwards, number 39. And that ball is fumbled right there. Picked up by Gray, number 85. A lot of wild razzmatazz. Jim's over there knowing one thing. He's got to get it in the end zone. Field goal won't help. And as I started to mention, as Jim confers with Bob Hallway, San Diego trails Oakland. Oakland with a 6-1-2 and two record, and the Oakland Raiders football team, I'm sure, is watching this game tonight because they play San Diego next week in Oakland. The two teams who really are not going into the playoffs, they pretty well know that. They are playing their hearts out tonight. They are. And you mentioned the game coming up Sunday. So far this year, Frank, eight nights of Monday night football, 16 games, 12 times teams that have played on Monday night have won on the following Sunday. Only four times have they lost. You know, one thing I think that, well, anyway, what made me think of it. You've got two teams here, as Frank mentioned. They're probably not going to get in the playoffs. I think that's one of the beautiful things about the game. These guys still play for the enjoyment. They play to win. Two good football teams. Cardinals trailing 17 to 10. A minute and two seconds remain. Gilliam right, Gray left, Hart back. That's Arthur Lane. That's the out of bounds, inside the 10-yard line, MacArthur Lane. 
And Jim Hart coolly drilling that ball to Lane. Six receptions for MacArthur tonight, and he's had a big night. 54 yards on those six receptions. That time, a pickup of seven yards. Second down and three. The ball resting on the nine-yard line of the Chargers. We have 57 seconds remaining to be played. Gray goes left. Out to the right of Gilliam. The Cardinals with two timeouts. The drop by Edwards. Edwards to the two. Good ball by Hart. What a ball game. What a ball game. Hart stops the clock. He'll go back now to hallway. This is really fun. Man, you know, it's been a good ball game. They've a lot of offense. You're getting right down to the end of it. Hart's going back over there again. Got them down to the two-yard line. And we've got to get this thing in. One more timeout, is that right, or two more? One timeout remaining One for the Cardinals. One timeout remaining. Okay. He's got 44 seconds left. He knows that he can run it one more time and stop it with a timeout. He also is not thinking about a field goal. I've got to get it in there. So the situation is this. It's first down on the two. He has a more complete offense at his control than he would have in a situation without any timeouts, of course. So he can run or he can throw. I, these two big facts, I would be surprised if he doesn't go right out of Frank. All right, he can still stop the clock one more time, but we were talking about these two teams who really, again, will probably not make the playoffs. They more than likely will not make the playoffs, but I know you've been in situations like this, Don. I have. There is a, no feeling in the world like it. From both teams, really, there is an electricity that is going on in that huddle that no one who's not played this game could ever know. On the two-yard line, the stacked short yardage offense. Shivers is the deep man. Edwards and Hart. This is MacArthur Lane. He's stacked up. Maybe a slight game. The clock will move. Two plays have been called in the huddle. This will be a pass play. If Hart does not use that other timeout, he'll have to, I guess, now. He's got him back in the main. huddle. Now he's going to call that timeout, I believe, Frank. I don't know what he's going to do. Yep, he called it. Well, it doesn't really matter. He's will have the time. I'd like to say this. You know, you you uh, go around the different leagues, different teams, I mean, and the, and the fans don't, I don't believe, appreciate the team for as much effort as they should. The teams out here playing, you've got a good football game. As Frank mentioned, how can you explain the feeling of a situation like this unless you've been in the huddle? Fans have a way of identifying with teams, and they do place a lot of emphasis on that one and loss record, which is really unfortunate because you've got, here's a 40 group of guys on each team doing something they do very well. They have good talent, or they wouldn't be here. So the appreciation of the game can come from a lot of areas other than that one loss. Unfortunately, that's the thing that pays the most dollars. And again, unfortunately, that's the thing that too many people place too much importance on. And as we look at the clock, you saw the conversation between, between Jim Hart and his head coach, Bob Hallway. You can bet he's going to come back having called two plays. He will call two plays in the huddle. The first one wouldn't necessarily have to be a run. The second one definitely will be if they do not get into the end zone. Because he is out of timeouts. After this play, he will need to have the clock stop. So it's all boiled down to this. 20 seconds remaining to be played in the game. The Chargers lead 17 to 10. The second down, the ball is on the two-yard line. The big man gets the call. Edwards, he Edwards, Ben Edwards. Ben Edwards behind Wayne Mulligan, Clyde Williams, Herb Goody, hurdling for the touchdown. Let's look at it again, and again, I don't think you can convince Sid Edwards that he's not going to be in the playoff. He's going for that touchdown. And look at that offensive line and move them out. Let's take a look at it again. Three, just straight in there. Zone blocking. Look at Babbitt. Number 60 come in. Was that MacArthur Lane that fired in there? Great block by MacArthur Lane. Pocken ties it up. Jim Pocken hits the conversion. It's all tied up. 17 apiece. 
scoreboard clock with 17 seconds remaining. I like it. 15 games. Not going there. Playing hard. Been fun. I've enjoyed it. Well, I've had a quarter philosophy. Well, you need one. Never did that on Eastern Park like that. <laughs> That's when you were playing quarterback. Can I take a moment to thank our statistician, Jerry Capstein, and our spotter, Don Eddington. What position did you play, uh, for Eastern Park, they are? They called me crazy legs. <laughs> they called him crazy what? <laughs> Jerry Levias is deep, along with Bryant Salter, as Jim Bakken sets the football up. The Chargers might possibly have one play after the kickoff return. Bakken checking out his alignment. There you see the situation. Five plays on a 34-yard scoring drive after a recovery of a Mike Montgomery football. And believe me, an unhappy youngster is the outstanding rookie, Mike Montgomery. The onside kick attempt, this is just to make sure it's not run back, but it will give San Diego possibly two plays, maybe even three. I don't know whether I'd have done that. I don't either. Got him in pretty good position. Hale's got to hit one pass now. One pass. Yards. They've got two timeouts left. Well, it's still not open. And... Hadel will call timeout now because the clock would be started once the two teams were on the field and set. I think that's one we can legitimately second guess, Dandy. Yeah, I, I would say you kick it down there. You at least got a shot. They haven't really been doing that well on the returns. Uh, it's been, you know, Levias has not gotten, I think, more than past the 20 yard line on the return. Kicking teams for the Cardinals have done a super job. But again, it's not our business, man. That's theirs. Sure makes for an interesting ball game, though, don't it? A good number on the scoreboard. 16 seconds remaining to be played as Hadel comes back to the conference with his head coach, Sid Gelman, who, by the way, is there are only other two other coaches active today in the game who won more football games than Sid Gilman, Paul Brown, and we do back. Still excitement. Out to the left goes Garrison. Parks is to the right. You can bet it'll be in the air. Going for Parks, who slips and falls in front of Miller Farr. That play took four seconds on the scoreboard clock. Hadel, 19 of 27 tonight for 200 yards, 31 below his average per game this year. And he may well get it. Twelve seconds. He needs a field goal. He has a punt kicker, Dennis Barty, who has kicked one from 52 yards this year. So he needs approximately 10 to 15 yards to have a good shot at winning this football game. Parts right, Garrison left. Garrison! Garrison to the 37, timeout San Diego. Five seconds to go. Wow, man. Wow. Yabba dabba do, look at him come down. Dipping it down the inside, a turn in run. Well thrown, well timed. And we'll see what Partey can do. A good dramatic situation. Partey in the kind of situation George Blanda has been in with Oakland so many times over the past season and a half. Partey, whose place kicking was improved by his own admission by instructions, coaching help from George Blanda, the great veteran, for the time. Okay, all right, he's hit on 125-yarder. He's kicking from the 45. Let's watch. It looks good. It is good. How's that? Look at that handle. You're moving, Partey. Unbelievable. Carthy is in there. That's, the game is over. Just as the cannon goes on. 20 to 17. A great victory for the San Diego Giants. These fans are going wild. And who can blame them? 
They've thirsted for victory ever since that great team of the early 60s, the Heather and Eli, Earl Faison, Ron Mix, Keith Lincoln, and Paul Lowe, and they feel that way again tonight. Look at Gilman going off, Frank. You know, the happiest youngster there is Mike Montgomery, who fumbled the football, giving it to the Cardinals. They went in to go ahead, or rather to tie this game up. Now Partey has just hit 45 yards out. Unbelievable football game. Great performers. And the final score, the Chargers 20, the Cardinals 17. We'll return to San Diego Stadium in a moment. 